Wow. That looks like you are on screen now. I am on screen so they can hear and see me. Let us know in the chat. Our Halloween stream is live. Welcome. I am Muriel, pastor of the Church of Vows. <laughs> you guys get me in costume. And here we have our other special guest coming by today. Uh, <laughs> Darth let me solo her? Darth let me solo her. <laughs> um, so, uh, hi, I am Brandon, your turtle for the evening. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> and this is Adam. And I'm um, doing the world a favor and covering my face. <laughs> so we thought we would level up from last year where we were um, characters. Well, I was a character from, uh, from Hades. And I figured since we spent so much time on Elden Ring, I would be Muriel. Seems like a character that I uh, can fit, though I can't do the British accent. And um, I wanted to be let me solo her so I could show off my sweet muscles. Yes, yes, you're 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 awesome. Uh, I worked pack. very hard for these. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we may maybe went a little overboard this time. Uh, I keep we, seeing myself on the monitor. I'm like, man, I look ridiculous. Thank you to <laughs> Kelly. Kelly, what's your last name? Is Kelly around? Oh. Donahue, Kelly Donahue did my uh, did my makeup. Um, and uh, very last minute, we were able to get, we had someone else we were working with to hopefully come and they couldn't. And Kelly just stepped, stepped in last minute, uh, scrambled and got us some stuff. And here I am as uh, the turtle pope himself, Mariel. Um, Adam, who made your costume? Uh, Jane, actually. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, did both of them for the most part. Lauren helped with that, uh, with yours yes. as well. Yes, Lauren did make my miter and I think uh, worked on maybe the legs. Uh, Jane did all the legs and Jane oh. did all the details on the miter as well. Okay, awesome. Well, uh, so what are we going to be doing tonight, Adam? We're going to be doing all kinds of fun stuff. We have a plethora of agenda items today. Yeah. Fan mail, hopefully some costume contest and pumpkin carving stuff. Ooh, I didn't know about that. You got that stuff ready? Uh, I mean, I heard about I, it. I, um, Octavia had set things up. I just need to see what's what's sweet. There. So, so we have here's what we're going to be doing tonight, it's sort of agenda wise. Uh, Adam and I'll just chat for a few minutes here uh, at the start, and then we have we have various tricks and treats. Lane, you get to be a trick. Um, <laughs> our guests are our tricks. Uh, we have we have three of those coming by, uh, and we're, for our treats, uh, we have. Uh, magic cards. Yay. So Tim Shields, who uh, who is uh, the owner of Cascade Games, he also does the Judges Academy. He sent me these cool booster packs of collectors boosters, and I am hoping to uh, get myself some triumphs. Uh, what we're actually going to do is we're going to sign some of these and give them to you guys. Uh, so we're going to do we're going to talk to Lynn Buchanan for a little bit. Lynn is a former student of mine, now works here at Dragonsteel. Um, and has a book deal, so we're going to talk to her. Uh, and then uh, after that, we are going to uh, then do fan mail. Uh, we will have our, our second uh, guest show up, and we'll do fan mail. And everyone who sent me a fan mail, we're going to send you a card out of these packs, these special cool packs. Um, and then we're actually going to do something we want to try a dry run for. Let me explain to you what I want to do. Uh, this might be insane, and we may not be able to pull it off. But we have our convention coming up, Dragonsteel 2022, right? Um, with the book launch. And at that, I do a charity magic draft. And I thought, let's see if we can find ways that we can expand our charity reach to those who watch the stream. So what I would like to do is uh, something involving all of you guys. And we will get to the details of that at a later date, if indeed it ends up working. But uh, we're going to do a test run on this stream. Uh, what our test run is, is we're gonna turn on, they aren't on right now, later on we're gonna turn on Super Chats, which is this thing you can do in YouTube where you can send money to the person running the stream. Well, uh, if you send us money in our Super Chat tonight, we will give it to charity. Where are we giving this money, Adam? You know, I have that on my phone and my phone <laughs> is on that table. Okay, Adam will, will tell us I later. Will, yeah, I will. Adam will tell us later, but we want to do this t sort of test run so we can raise some money for charity. Uh, and so if you super chat at $20 or more, 
it's not on right now, but it will be on later, then your question will get propelled to the top, and I will address that one next, and I will give you one of these cards. We will sign it, and uh, we will tell you then how you're going to get a hold of it, and we will send it to you, just one of the ones off the top of the stack of the ones I open of these cards that Tim sent us. Um, and so, Tim, if you're watching, thank you very much. We're going to put them to good use. I am going to keep any triomes I find, just fair warning. Uh, I need those for my cube. Um, and for those who don't care about magic cards, you can still get something cool signed and sent to you, or you can just donate money to charity and you don't have to get anything from it. Uh, but Adam will tell us what the charity is going to be. Uh, I believe you said it was the food bank because yeah, a, uh, uh, food Thanksgiving bank. Yep. Uh, coming up, which we thought was a, a good thing. And, you know, the, the sort of candy trick-or-treat nature of it uh, seems to lend itself well to that. Yeah. You know, I love how I, I can make my, hand, my feet <laughs> dance here. If I didn't know it was you, uh -huh. I would not know it was you. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. That could just be the bucket on my head talking. You, you do have a bucket on your head. <laughs> this is true. Um, and so my hands will pop out occasionally, and I will sign things. So I'll the, the, pretend they're the, the back legs of the turtle, um, somehow reaching up to, <laughs> to sign things. Um, the, uh, the whole idea of the turtle was my idea, but then you guys uh, definitely overachieved and found us a, uh, a film caliber uh, makeup artist. Um, and my children are baffled by the look of me. Uh, it looks very nice. <laughs> Uh, and I just want to say for those who are wondering about the questions in the Reddit thread, I'm yep. still going to be going down yep. those. Yep, we're still going to be doing those. And um, occasionally pulling questions from the chat that I yep. like. But Mostly we'll probably be doing some of that fan mail and things like, tonight we're just going to be having some fun. Yeah. Uh, we may not get as much done tonight, but we will may hopefully find some triumphs and give away some magic cards. Very cool. So, Adam, goodbye with you. Away. Uh if you have no idea who Adam's costume is, uh, you can look up Let Me Solo Her. It's a guy who helps people defeat the fire, the hardest boss in Elden Ring. Um, she is very, very difficult. Uh, she, take, she, she took me a long time to defeat. And there's a, there's a guy who, um, who helps people out with that. And he wears a bucket on his head and carries two katanas. And so there we are. And I am uh, an NPC in Elden Ring, a uh, tortoise with that you can um you can learn spells from so um he is uh he is he is very cute um maybe he wouldn't want to be described that way but he was my favorite npc so <clears throat> i am going to have someone hand me my cup of water i'm strong enough to do it yes yes and let's put the coaster a little bit mm -hmm. perfect thank you adam all right, and Lynn. Dallin, Dallin is here as well. Oh, well. Oh, oh, we have not, not yet, not yet. Wait, 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 not yet. Uh, not yet. Oh, there he goes. He's not listening. Dallin, we're not ready for you yet. Okay. Uh, do you have the camera pointed? Uh, I can. Let's point the camera. The, the, here's, here's, our, here's our special camera guest star. Just... Here's our trick. So All right. Here he comes. Here, here he comes. <laughs> it's very dark. Uh, do you want to turn on the light and see if they can get a better shot of it? Sure. Well, okay. Go. Okay. All right. Well, he's off. Well, you. goodbye. Uh, goodbye. That was good <laughs> uh, my son is a knight uh, for Halloween, and um, he. I mean, fits right in. Yes, he does. I need to get a microphone for myself. Mm. Uh, Lynn, are you coming? Yes. Um. I called you Rachel earlier, didn't I? Already. <laughs> no, you're good. Either works. Either works. Well, Lynn is my pen name. Lynn Buchanan. Lynn so. Buchanan. Yep. Lynn, welcome. <laughs> Thank uh, you. This is uh, this is a well done costume. Thanks. Yeah. I don't recognize it. Um, so I'm Persephone from Lore Olympus. Okay. Web comic that I really like. Right. You've told me to read it before, and I have not gotten around to it. Because I binged it in like a flash and told mm -hmm. everyone to read it now. <laughs> It's really good. Well, and you took my class how many times? Oh, gosh. Are we counting when I was the TA or just when I was a student? Just when you were a student. A student? Six times. You took it six times as a student? Yes. You hold the record? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then you eventually got in the 15-person class? I did. I did my second year. Your actually. second year. And yeah. then you took it? Okay. I just kept coming. You just kept. Yeah. 
which was fun. And then you became my TA. Mm -hmm. And also you work here uh, for Isaac in the art department. Yes, I'm Isaac's assistant, so I do lots of random stuff for him. Yes. Pretty much whatever Isaac needs me to do. <laughs> yep, all kinds of random stuff. Uh, tell us, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on, my turtle legs are dancing, <laughs> um, is because uh, one of the hardest things to talk about right now is breaking into the book industry. Mm. And you just did it. <laughs> Yay. Yay. <laughs> yep. So tell us about your process of breaking in. Your book isn't out yet. It's not out yet. Yes. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's out. gonna come like another year and a half or something. Yeah, it's coming out in summer twenty twenty four. So yeah. pretty far out still. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. I kind of like that. I like having the time. <laughs> yes, you got to get used to the idea. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. But okay. Yeah. So how did I break in? It was such a long process, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> um, which you know, because you watched some of it while I was yep. in school. Um, but yeah. So I. It, it took, like, from, like, when I decided I wanted to be an author mm -hmm. to, like, actually breaking in. I think it took at least, I think I was up to 13 years mm. um, <laughs> and, like, 11 books. 11 books in 13 years. Yes. So you're on the Brandon Sanderson path yep. to uh, to much. professionalism. <laughs> yes. Yep. Because I, I think you you might have talked about this before. I'm sure you have. But, like, mm -hmm. I was kind of like you in that I didn't learn to revise for, like, a really long time. Right. And then, like, eventually I went to the Odyssey writing workshop and that, like, kicked me in the pants and made me learn how to revise. Yep. Um, <laughs> Odyssey is fantastic. It is. Odyssey is amazing. Um, anyone who, like, wants to get better at, like, science fiction and fantasy should check out Odyssey. Just yep. little plug there for Odyssey. <laughs> um, and so you went to Odyssey. Mm -hmm. uh, it kicked you in the rear and you got kicked going. Kicked in the rear. Yep. yep. And then I went to grad school. Mm -hmm. um, and COVID happened. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> which made everything very weird very fast. Um, but it also gave me lots of time to focus on my writing, which mm -hmm. was nice. And you, uh, you, you're going the traditional route. You never yes. wanted to go the indie route. I did uh, We talked about it together, and you're just yeah. like, this is not for me. Mm -hmm. Why did you decide traditional? Like, what drove you that direction? I, I didn't want to do all the marketing myself. You know, it's kind of that whole, like, I like the idea of getting to write more than I have to, like, push my own books. Mm -hmm. And indie is still very much, like, you have to be really good yeah. at marketing. You have to be really good. Um, Both of them require some marketing effort for you, but it's an extra true. level yeah. of difficult in indie. Yeah. And I also was attracted to traditional publishing because of the editors that work there. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted, like, a really good editor to help me <laughs> make my books good. So, And I ended up with a great editor. So. And first you got an agent. Yes. Uh, Matt Bialer? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and how, how did that go? Like, did you query? Yeah, I did. With Matt, it was a little weird. I actually went to another workshop, um, Futurescapes, which is local mm -hmm. around here, and Matt was a guest mm -hmm. um, a year that I went. Um, I literally went for Matt, honestly. <laughs> I was like, he's going to be there. I'm right. going to be there. Right. Um, so, he is yeah. one of the top agents in mm -hmm. sci-fi fantasy, and so... Yeah, yeah, I was like, I'm, I'm coming now. Yeah, mm -hmm. actually, that year I hadn't planned on going to Futurescapes, and then I saw he was going, and I was like, mm, I'm going to be at Futurescapes. <laughs> but yeah, so I met him there, um, and he read some of my writing for like a critique group that we were doing uh -huh. there. And afterwards, I just went up to him and was like, so did you like my writing enough for me to like send you a book? And he was like, yes, please send me a book. <laughs> so you had to go do the hard thing, which was, yeah. uh, that's really nerve-wracking, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Part of you's like, if you wanted it, you would have asked for it, right? Or mm -hmm. something like that. But you went. Yeah, you, I went. I did uh -huh. it. <laughs> yeah. Good for you. You listened to me. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. I did. Because, yeah, it is really scary <laughs> to network, honestly. Yeah. I kind of enjoy it, which is strange because I'm not a super extrovert or anything. But mm -hmm. networking for some reason is fun for me. <laughs> okay. Um. So, yeah. So I went and asked him and he requested that book. That was not the book he ended up signing with mm -hmm. me with. But he read that one. Rejected it, but liked my writing enough that he was like, please send me like Something your next else, book. Yeah. yeah. So, and then I sent him that one and that's the one he ended up signing me with. Hmm. So it just took two tries. <laughs> but then you entered a very long period of mm -hmm. no one was buying anything because of COVID. Yeah. And um, like I, I say, like breaking in right now, particularly in, in anything traditional or indie, but it's mm -hmm. just... Seems way harder than it used to it's be. It's terrible. Yeah. yeah it's it's really always bad. been terrible. Now it's super terrible. Yeah. 
Uh, how long did you spend on sub after you got yeah. Matt? Or how long between getting Matt and finally getting an offer? A year and a half. A year and a half. And it could have been worse. Yeah, definitely <laughs> could have been worse. Yeah, so a year and a half still felt like nails on a chalkboard, uh -huh. honestly. Um, it was very tough. Yeah, you had to suffer through being my TA and me referencing, <laughs> hey, Rachel's got a, an agent. And then everybody being like, ooh, have you sold a book? Sold, no, no, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But this year, uh -huh. I can say I have. Yes. <laughs> so. That'll be fun. <laughs> but yeah, so yes, being on submission right now, whether you're out to like agents mm -hmm. or editors is just really tough. I mean, I'm, I feel like even just, it's been like, I got my offer in June. Mm -hmm. So it's been what, like five months? Not yeah. even. Yeah. And I already feel like I'm not up to speed with like how it is for other people right now. Yeah. Just from like things I've heard, like I feel like it's actually gotten worse since I oh, stopped man. being on submission. That's not what they want to hear. I know. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, it's so rough. But yeah, but a lot of this is like, it's just like the huge backlog mm -hmm. in publishing right now. Um, right. Because of COVID. Because of COVID. Yeah. And everyone's submissions sat on desks. Mm -hmm. Books didn't get published because they couldn't get paper. Yeah. Um, a a lot of chains. newer authors mm -hmm. got pushed back. Mm -hmm. uh, and then suddenly they're trying to get everything through the supply chains. Yep. And, and yeah. that was, it's just like, gets worse and worse mm -hmm. <laughs> the longer it goes. And also a lot of um, editors have been leaving the industry right now as well. That's been something that a lot of people have been yeah. talking about. So that has not helped either. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I do not know very many people left at Tor. There's been just big shakeups all across yeah. the, the business. Mm -hmm. And now with uh, Random House maybe consuming Simon & Schuster, who knows? Oh, is that the newest? Yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, we don't know. That's what, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So now... You did eventually sell to? Uh, editor or house? Harper Voyager. <laughs> Harper Voyager. <laughs> Which is the science fiction and fantasy imprint over at HarperCollins. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and your editor? David Pomerico. Who I have met and like. He's uh, awesome. He I love David. He is a great guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, and it just went the standard way, as I understand, like mm. lots of subs, Eventually, an editor liked it and mm -hmm. made an offer on it. Yeah, um, that's pretty much what happened. It just took a year yeah. and a half for that to happen. Yeah, and it was like, it's interesting because we had, um, I don't know how common this is, honestly. I probably need to talk to more people who have been on sub recently, but uh -huh. we had quite a few editors who just ghosted. Yeah. I just never heard back, and that was surprising to me and Matt. I uh, had not had that happen, even when I yeah. was early breaking in, that mm -hmm. you just didn't hear from You just from don't them. hear, yeah. yeah. So that's kind of a thing that happens now unfortunately mm -hmm. um i mean it's understandable again because the editors are so busy mm -hmm. uh, but it's yeah it's it's tough being on sub is tough <laughs> uh, and i'm seeing in the chat i don't know if people can hear me sorry about that um i'm seeing in the chat that the merger was blocked oh was it the merger was blocked oh i didn't think we'd find out till november is what i was told so mm -hmm. i haven't been paying attention to the trades this last week yeah it broke today broke today, oh, today. Ooh, today. mergers block stephen king got his uh got his wishes nice <laughs> so so uh someone else will have to buy, to buy simon and schuster am i yep that's uh that's uh, as much as i know that it'll make some of the people there that i work with sad mm. this is good for authors um it is. uh if someone else were buying simon it'd be bad for authors but not nearly as bad as them going under what is already the largest uh publisher yeah and so uh so it's a good thing if someone else has to buy simon yeah. um yeah. so or if they have to keep going on their own um just it's uh, it's it's good. That's why Stephen King went and, and talked. The the fewer places we have to sell, uh, the, the worse it is. is. The rough yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, they always say that they won't compete with each other. Or they <laughs> they will compete with each other internally, but they won't. Um, yeah. I'm different. If you're not familiar with the business, uh, one company can own a bunch of smaller companies mm -hmm. that all uh, publish things, but they're not going to bid it against each other for a book. If they, if multiples of them like it, they'll get together, talk about, and then have one of them oh, bid on it. it. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And in my experience, I've never had, you know, we'll often send to four or 10 different editors, sometimes as many as 10, at a, mm -hmm. at a, I don't think we ever got to 10, but there's like seven that we've sent to it, one publisher, a mm -hmm. different imprints. Uh, and we've never had them bid against, against each, each other. other. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. They always, they always pick one who wants it the most that'll fit in their line the best. Mm -hmm. So um, this, is, this is part of why. 
Uh, so that's uh, that's good news that came yeah. down, and good news for you. Uh, tell us about uh, revision, like revision. Revision. <laughs> What's going on with you right now with uh, with them, and uh, how did you learn revision? Uh, and uh, how is it going working with an editor these days uh, in, in one of the, the big five? Um, I'll start with how I learned revision. Mm -hmm. um, Odyssey. <laughs> I know that's like a lame answer, but... Mm. Um, uh, yeah, sorry. I like my brain just stopped for a second. Um, with revision, I feel like I learned it honestly just by like forcing myself to go back uh -huh. to a book because I just was in a phase where I was just writing drafts of books and like expecting them to be perfect. Right. Like as soon as I wrote them and I also like couldn't get myself to like go back yeah, to a book. Yeah, we're very similar in that. Yeah. It's hard to get excited about that book. Yeah, when like, you've already written it. You're yeah. like, oh yeah, I've got this great idea. I want to write the new mm -hmm. idea. Oh, I already finished that old book. Why would I do it? Yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. so like my first big step with like doing revision for real the first time was after Odyssey, I had learned a lot about plotting and pacing. And I had a project that I had written before Odyssey that I really mm -hmm. liked. But I like went back to it after Odyssey and like looked at it. I was like, this has no plot <laughs> and this <laughs> has terrible pacing. So I just essentially tried to like take everything I had learned and just like mm -hmm. put it onto this book. And that was like just a huge learning experience for me. Um, so I kind of learned revision by like forcing myself to revise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's kind of like that, you know, you learn to write by writing. Yeah. Kind of going back to that. Um, but yeah, so that's how, that's how I learned. And I think, um, I'm also like a weird beast now with my writing um, in that I revise every scene as I go. Mm -hmm. um, so that like by the time I finish a draft, I've usually done like two or three drafts of a project because okay. I've like gone yeah. through that many revisions per mm -hmm. scene. Um, I don't recommend that for most people. It's a pretty bad process, honestly. It's pretty frustrating. Um, but it's kind of how I have to work now, now that I can like see my flaws uh -huh. in my writing. Um, but yeah. Uh, with working with my editor right now, yeah. um, we haven't gone too deep yet into the editing. Um, when I did have my, my initial call with him, he told me that the edits were going to be pretty light in general, um, that my manuscript was clean enough that we weren't going to have to do like huge major changes. Well, that's good. Yeah, which I appreciate it. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that's good to hear. Um, but we did go through our first round, um, and it was just a lot of like little things I needed to go throughout the manuscript to like tweak mm -hmm. and change, to just kind of make it um, fit a little better with like what we want to go with. Um, specifically, this is a standalone book mm -hmm. and I made the ending a little too dangly, um, in the original draft. So I went back and tied up some loose ends a little bit and just made it more firmly a standalone. That was kind of like the major revision I've done. I have at least one book that I wish I'd done that. Yeah. On. Yes. <laughs> Which one? The Rhythmatist. <laughs> yep. Uh, I left it very dangly at the yeah. end and, um, I was, planning to write a trilogy but then the wheel of time hit me and getting back to that time. that series yeah. has been has been super hard mm. once you bite off the um you know uh the the project of the stormlight archive <laughs> your time your time vanishes Diminishes. uh for writing yeah. uh and you need to make good on on that big mm. promise but it means i'm not making as good on my promise for uh for the arithmetist which someday 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 so. I want to read the sequel, <laughs> not mm. to put more pressure on you. <laughs> but, uh, I need another pen. Um, uh, the jar of them has vanished. Where is it? Oh. I was oh. signing pages while I was getting the makeup put on. Uh, it took about two hours uh, to do this. So um, as we like to use double use my time, mm -hmm. I sat there and signed pages, signed which pages. is why our, <laughs> our, our pen uh, jar flew away. Makes sense. <laughs> so, uh, 2024, we yes. will likely have you on more times al along the, <laughs> the way because I think it's kind of fun for people to see that, mm. you know, it's still happening. It can still happen. Yes, it can. It's hard, but you can still sell mm -hmm. a book traditionally published the traditional way. Like yep. all the old still ways possible. of doing it, sending out queries, going to conferences, mm -hmm. networking a little bit, um, and selling to an editor like still happens it still happens yeah mm -hmm. feels yeah. like a unicorn these days yeah but it happens you don't need to yeah. be a famous youtuber to sell a book no, um, you don't. so yeah <laughs> um 
So you should tell us what the book is, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? You should I, you should actually do like the promotional side mm. and tell us what what your yes. book is about. I know it's a year and a, it's two years almost away from yes, it coming out, it right? Is, but, but I, I can definitely yeah. give you a quick mm-hmm. rundown of what it is. Um, so it's called The Dollmakers. Mm-hmm. We'll see if that title changes. I don't think it will, but mm. The Dollmakers. Um, and it's about a woman named Xion who has spent her entire life learning how to make these magical dolls to fight the monsters that terrorize her country. Uh huh. Um, but when the time comes for her dolls to be assessed, she's told that they're too delicate and beautiful um, to fight the monsters. Fight monsters. <laughs> so uh, she's not happy about that at mm. all. Uh, so she sets out to very publicly um, challenge this really famous doll maker in kind of a bid to prove herself. Okay. Um, and her dolls that they can actually fight monsters. So it's like Pokemon with dolls, battle <laughs> arena. Sort of stuff? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but there's definitely dolls fighting monsters. Um, there's definitely dolls. So yes. are they like giant dolls then? Like, we talking like golems? Some of them. Some it of depends. Them. Like, mm-hmm. Xion's dolls, uh, again, they're like very small and petite and beautiful. And mm-hmm. she she tells everyone that what matters is intelligence in dolls and no one believes her. Ah. <laughs> so that's kind of her angle. <laughs> that's kind of scary. Intelligent dolls that, that kill things? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that that has no <laughs> potential for going terribly. For going terribly, yeah. terribly wrong. Mm. No, yeah. So. And her journey causes a whole lot of chaos um, for everyone involved. <laughs> That's and awesome. Yeah. People are wondering where they can follow you if you want to. Oh yeah. Um, so I'm on Twitter at Lynn B Writes. Um, I also have a website, Lynn B Writes. Uh, no, no underscores or anything. No, nope, just just Lynn B Writes. Okay. L Y N N. Yes. L Y N N B and Writes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if you're interested in signing up for a newsletter, there is a link to sign up uh, for that in the description. Yep. yep. And that, I'll just use that to tell you guys like when the cover is released and when pre-orders are up and like promotional things like that. Yep. And we'll we'll have Lynn on, like I said, to kind of <laughs> chronicle the life of a brand new author. Coming Be- out. <laughs> I, I try to give advice on this, but it's been 20 years mm. for me. And so hopefully you will be able to give them advice for a lot of people who are trying to break in right now of things yeah. that you're seeing and whatnot. At the very least, it's kind of a fun thing to see mm. something sell and then all the way along. When you have your your cover, you should come on again and review yeah. that. That would be fun. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I love talking about publishing. Honestly, I'm a giant mm. nerd. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah I you love- took my class six times. That, yes. uh, that's so- that tells you. It, yes. Yeah. yeah, so I love to talk about the business side of things as well. So I'm actually going to be at the con. Um, oh, yeah, Dragon you'll be Steel, at Dragonsteel. And mm-hmm. I'll be on a couple panels. Mm-hmm. Um, one of them is about traditional publishing. So if you want to hear me yap about that some more, um, I'll be doing that. I will not be pink, <laughs> <laughs> for the record. <laughs> and uh, while you guys are chatting, if you have any questions for Lynn... Yep, uh, Lynn's going to be here for another 15 minutes or so. So mm-hmm. throw us some questions for, for Lynn um, because it is so hard to call you Lynn. <laughs> I know. I ask a lot of people with my names. <laughs> what, what did you uh, – so what made the decision of a pen name for you? I mean, it, it is your middle name, right? It is so my middle name, you're, yeah. You're, yeah. And it's a really lame reason. <laughs> um, it's because I like my middle name. <laughs> That's and not I a lame reason. Use it. That's yeah. a really good reason. <laughs> yeah. I, like, I almost use my middle name. Oh yeah. Which is Win. Win. Yeah. But then there was a Diana Win Jones and I'm like, oh, it'll uh, be confusing to have another Win, so. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, I There's, mean, <laughs> when I went to college, I actually thought about like switching over and being just called Lynn when I was uh-huh. in college and my mom might hate me for sharing the story, but Ooh. I like went to my mom. It's not that scandalous, but I like went to my mom and I told her this and she was like, Okay, if you don't like the name I gave you, you can you can use your middle name. <laughs> and I was like, Mom. <laughs> I was like, Okay, I won't do it. Um, <laughs> but now you can have the best of both worlds. Yeah, now I can use both. So I do like my my given name, Rachel. It's yes. good. <laughs> Dave, uh, who has sadly passed away, my mentor, mm. David Farland. Uh, he went by Dave, but his pen name was David, which are, you'd say is the same yeah. thing, but different last names. But he mm. said even that little tweak was nice because s- people would call, and if they asked for David, he mm. knew he had to be in business mode yeah. because it was people who were calling about his his work sort of thing because mm-hmm. all of his personal stuff, he would sign Dave. And so yeah. even for like a mortgage or something, they call and ask for Dave. But if they called for David, then it was David. Ru- the writer. Yeah. So it was. Uh, he found a little handy in that regard, and I kind of like that too, honestly. Mm-hmm. Like I know when someone calls me Lynn, yes, it's about writing, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, almost exclusively. So I'm like, yep. 
Adam, any questions pop up in the... Uh, yeah, one that I found interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to know a couple of questions. One, um, did Brandon's lectures change substantially over the many mm -hmm. times you took them? Ooh. Did he get better? Did he get worse? <laughs> um, and then what is that process like? Um, did you get it uh, for full credit or did you just do audits mm -hmm. the other times? People think you're very wealthy <laughs> considering you're able to take the same class over and over and over again. <laughs> well, I was at BYU. I, I was a student at BYU, so it was just part of my tuition. Yeah, but um, adding one credit on that's a class that you get an A if mm -hmm. you go every week doesn't actually add any money cost on yeah. your tuition. Mm -hmm. So I'm not rich. Uh, but uh, I feel like the lectures have consistencies, but there's always like something different every year. Like I feel like there's always like we go on slightly different tangents on slightly different subjects. Um, I don't know. <laughs> you probably got very tired yeah. of hearing my jokes because <laughs> I do use some of the same jokes every year. Well, they're funny, mm. so, <laughs> but, uh, um, but yeah, I did. At this point, I do feel like I can anticipate yeah. what, mo what most lectures will be like. You could probably um, give my lectures. <laughs> yep. Maybe. <laughs> you get you and Isaac up there and, and just you know, swap a back branding and cardboard cutout. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what was the other question? Did I answer the question? I think yeah, I think you did. I yeah. Did. Oh, okay. Got him. <laughs> Um, Ethan says, Lynn, my wife is a budding author. She finished a book and wants to publish it, but she's had no luck so far going traditional. Mm. Do you think self-publishing would hurt her, hurt traditional down the road? I feel like it used to be said that it would. Um, but lately I've heard just like reading discourses with other authors and editors that self-publishing isn't as much of a taboo as it used to be. Um, so I don't think it would hurt, really, honestly, unless she wanted to publish that book traditionally, then it might, like later down the road, that might cause a problem. Yeah, I think that's the right yeah. answer. Um, mm -hmm. Like these days, I think a lot of the people submitting will have indie published. Not, yeah, not all common. indie published people want to publish traditionally, mm -hmm. but a lot of people who are trying to publish traditionally will have done that. Done yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And like the worst thing that could possibly happen, the worst failure state for this is, mm you then change your name and publish under a different name because your indie mm -hmm. career doesn't take off. And that can happen traditionally too. You're, it's a thing. Like yeah. <laughs> It's not a big deal. I mm -hmm. would say I wouldn't stress that aspect mm -hmm. of it unless that book you have yeah. dreams of publishing traditionally because unless you get a certain threshold of success in indie publishing, uh, the, they'll feel the market is already tapped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you hear those like mm -hmm. really amazing stories of people who like uh, – self-published stories and then like books and then editors found them and then approached them yeah. and bought the books that happens occasionally that does but, but you yeah. have to get pretty good uh following mm -hmm. uh, you have to sell pretty well for that to, to happen. for that to happen yeah and, and things like that but you know indie publishing is legit it's here mm -hmm. to stay uh yeah. it is as legit as traditional publishing mm -hmm. uh they have different advantages and disadvantages mm -hmm. um i agree mm -hmm. yeah do you have any friends and you're like, like when I was breaking in, I had Dan who was breaking in around the same time. Mm -hmm. And I had like some other friends that were getting professional sales in magazines and things. Do you have mm -hmm. any friends that are kind of breaking in at the same time as you? I do have a friend who mm -hmm. is from Odyssey. <laughs> oh yeah. It just keeps coming back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, their pen name is PH Lee. Uh huh. Uh, they were, uh, I can't talk. They were nominated for a Nebula. This oh, year, wow. actually, for that's, one of their novelettes. That's great. Um, and it was actually, maybe I'm wrong, and <laughs> Lee can get mad at me if I'm wrong, um, but I'm pretty sure it was a novelette that they wrote at Odyssey. So Sweet. that was pretty fun, too. Um, and they just got an agent, um, and they're out on submission right now. Cool. So. Do you know anyone in the indie published world that's, uh, Oof. yeah. I don't think I not do. Not as connected with that. Yeah. Because your, your goal was always traditional mm -hmm. publishing. Yes. And that's yep. a lot of the people I know, a lot of the writers I know mm -hmm. are, same, are the same. They're going for traditional. So. Yeah. For a while, indie was the best place to be. There mm -hmm. are still legitimate reasons to be there. But mm -hmm. these days, it's kind of uh, which one's going to be better for you is kind of a toss up. Yeah. Um, I feel. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. I know. I know. At least one thing I feel like I've heard a lot is mm -hmm. with indie publishing. If you're like very prolific and you can put out a lot of content really fast, yeah, that tends to that's be better. Good. Mm -hmm. um, traditionally, pub traditional publishing is definitely slower. I will say <laughs> this: if um, this person who asked the question, if your mm -hmm. wife, I believe it was, only really has one book in her and is just like, "This is my my dream book," 
um, publishing that indie, don't expect a lot of sales because mm -hmm. most of the time you need that momentum of other books yeah. to, to push things. You can totally do it just so it exists there. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the one-off that gets really big doesn't happen in indie as often as it yeah. happens in traditional publishing. Mm -hmm. Um, I agree with that. Yeah. And you just you don't see one hit wonders in indie publishing very often. Not as often, yeah. You don't see them anywhere very often, right? <laughs> this Most is true. this yeah. business is all about yes. building a name, but mm -hmm. they do happen in traditional once in a while. Yeah. Um, someone asked since Odyssey keeps coming up, they want to know <laughs> if you would uh, go a little bit more into Odyssey and what it is. Yeah. Uh, so Odyssey is. A workshop for science fiction and fantasy writers. Um, it used to be in person before COVID, um, and it used to be six weeks. So when I went, it was a six week long workshop. I went to New Hampshire, and I was just there and just literally like immersed myself. Yeah, you had to live there for uh, six weeks. Yeah, yeah. in writing, mm -hmm. it was great. Um, it was great. I'm not even being sarcastic. That sounded yeah. kind of sarcastic. Um, but yeah, uh, and it's taught by Jean Cavellis, who is amazing. Um, she was a professional science fiction and fantasy editor for a while. And then she kind of, I don't know if she like stopped being an editor and then started doing Odyssey or if those were like at the same time. I was there at the cons when she did that. When she was still an editor. When, when she was still an editor. Okay, and I so. remember people talking about uh, Jane is going to start up uh, this thing called Odyssey. Odyssey. And I remember okay. flyers being handed out in a party and things like mm. that. Like, yeah. Okay, so she was still an editor. when She, she was, was still an editor, yeah. I think. We, I could be misquoting, but I know that it was like a big deal when she started mm -hmm. this. Yeah, and she, yeah, she's seriously one of the best writing teachers I've ever had, and, like, the feedback she gives is just... Um, but now, since COVID happened, Jean actually transit like, kind of moved Odyssey online, um, and so now it's permanently online. Um, and you apply, I think, at the end of every year? I'd have to double-check that. And you can choose if you want to do, like, six weeks or six months or a year, like, spread out the Odyssey experience. Um, and then like throughout whatever time period you pick, you'll also have like guests, um, teachers, writers, and editors um, from magazines and things like that who come in. And you get put in kind of like a little group, at least you did during your- I so did. Still... I'm not sure if they do that yeah. anymore. Um, Cause it's a little harder now that everyone's mm -hmm. picking how long they want to do it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know a ton about the online Odyssey. I just know mm -hmm. what my experience was. But yep. um, so I would recommend looking them up if you want to see kind of like what the online options are now. But it is, it's just really amazing. Um, if you've ever heard of Clarion, it was based mm. off the Clarion model. Yeah, it's similar to Clarion. Which yeah. is another workshop like this that it, I don't know what's up with Clarion post-COVID either. But They're in person still. Still in person. Yeah, okay. and I think Clarion West is as well. So those are the two other big workshops. But yeah, yep. so it's a workshop. Um, I preach about it a lot because honestly, like if I hadn't gone to Odyssey, I think mm -hmm. I probably would have improved eventually. <laughs> um, but Odyssey kind of like jump started me um, and just helped me improve like really fast, really quickly. So it's great. <laughs> well, awesome. Uh, any other questions we have for Lynn? Uh, yes, While I'm we've just got her. going back <laughs> to him real quick. Uh, I can't remember the exact phrasing or who it was from, but they want to know if you use any of Brandon's uh, laws for your magic systems. Mm. Yes. <laughs> I think I use all of them. I, they are so ingrained in me <laughs> um, at this point um, that I kind of go through those like logical steps whenever I'm making a magic system. You tend to do, we tend to have a similar perspective on magic, mm -hmm. uh, I would say, and world building in general. We do, yeah. Mm -hmm. I do think I go a little softer on my magic occasionally than you do because I, I like kind of the hand wavy stuff sometimes. Mm -hmm. but, Which is perfectly yeah. reasonable. Yeah. But yeah, my, my magic systems are pretty logical, pretty stick to the laws of the Sanderson laws. Uh, and then other people wanted to know uh, steps you'd recommend for querying or finding out which agents are querying or who to query, things like mm. that. Um, I used Query Tracker a lot um, when I was doing it. I not I queried back in 2020 so I don't know if it's still as useful as it was um, right. back then it's more relevant advice than what I had <laughs> which was back in uh two the early 2000s yeah. which was uh go buy writer's market um yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah so query tracker publishers 
marketplace. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't do that one because of the paywall and I was stubborn. <laughs> um, but I have a friend who uses it and she says she likes it a lot because on there you can see like the deals that are being made and what agents are doing, what deals. Yeah. It won't tell you who you can query right now, but it'll tell you who's selling. Yes. So yeah. you know to watch for when they open their mm -hmm. queries. Yeah. So you'll be able to mm -hmm. pick out agents from that. Um, I'm trying to think if I used anything else. Um, oh yeah, books. <laughs> I just like when I read a book I liked, I would flip back to the acknowledgments, and most authors mention their literary agent. Um, so if I read a book that I thought could be a comp for mine, or even was mm -hmm. just in a similar genre, I would find out who their agent were was. But. Um, and Chill Temper says, "What reforce? What free resources would you recommend for someone who couldn't afford something like Odyssey?" Hmm. Brandon's lectures are on YouTube, and they're very good. <laughs> um, and Jean actually posts some free Odyssey um, like lessons and writing. Um, I, it, I was about to say writing excuses, and I'm like, that's <laughs> writing advice. <laughs> writing advice, writing exercises. Ah, that's what it was. Writing exercises. Um, Is there? A, do you think there's an Odyssey YouTube? Is that where she posts those? There might be some podcasts. Um, I think she posts them mostly on the website. If you just okay. Google Odyssey Workshop, you'll mm -hmm. find their website, and they have, like, free resources. Like, literally, I think they're listed under, like, free resources. Um, so those are good. And uh, this is a dumb answer, but just read lots of books. Mm -hmm. um, reading is a good way to learn how to write. That's how I did it, at least. I, I read a lot. I, I was, think that's how almost everyone does it. Yeah. So read. Read lots mm -hmm. and lots of books. Good and bad ones. Awesome. Do we have one last question? Uh, yeah. Um, do you have any advice on when or how to know when you are ready to query? I am like the worst person to ask about this because I queried every book I ever wrote. Mm. <laughs> um, I had no threshold of knowing if my stuff was good or not. So my lame advice is just do it. <laughs> I think that's good advice. That's not lame advice. Yeah. Uh, I worry sometimes about indie publishing. Mm. Publishing... Like, it's not going to ruin you or anything, but I know most authors I know, it takes a few books before you're yep. good. And uh, I am glad that I published when I did. Mm -hmm. I don't want any of those old books Same. of mine available. <laughs> yeah. But almost every indie author I know has said, yeah, my early books, I wish I, wish I could get people mm -hmm. to read the newer ones, which are much better. Instead of the old. Instead yeah. of the old ones where, mm -hmm. you know, me, I'm like, if you still pick up Elantris, yeah, it's a little dated, but I'm still, it's... It's not like you're reading, you know, White Sand Prime or something like that. Uh, and so, yeah. yeah. Um, I will say, like, uh, the book I got my agent with was my sixth book. Mm. And the book I sold was my seventh. So and that it takes books. That happens. <laughs> yeah. Now, not everybody. Let's point out. Yeah. Name of the Wind is the first book. Oh, yeah, it happens. Harry Potter is the first yeah. book. It, mm -hmm. it totally happens. But I worry. I don't worry about that in traditional publishing. Like, if mm. you're querying and the book is good and it sells... Um, I worry about sometimes indie publishing. I often yeah, say, think about writing a few of them and then launching your career rather than write, putting up each one as you write it. Mm -hmm. uh, I just I think that a lot yeah. of authors would be happier mm -hmm. taking that, deciding which among them is their strongest and putting that and as their first foot yeah. forward. I agree. That's but there's no reason to not query when no. you're trying to just, go traditional. Yeah, just do it. I mean... You'll get to a point where you've revised and looked at this thing or yeah. poked at this thing so many times that there's really no point. Just, just send it out. You know? <laughs> well, Lynn, thank you so much for coming by. I have yeah. one other Ooh, question. I apologize. Uh -huh. um, okay. Philip Denny has asked this a mm -hmm. few times, and I think mm -hmm. it's an impactful question. Okay. Um, where did you get your wig? <laughs> I got my wig on Amazon. There you go, Philip. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> your your sprouts are supposed to be, this is my natural hair color. Oh, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. my mom wanted me to spray my hair pink, and I was like, no. <laughs> I like my hair the color it is. Well, <laughs> you look pretty <laughs> awesome, though. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, very good costume. <laughs> I just go pink. Is that what you're okay, saying, Adam? It's awesome. What? <laughs> I just go pink. Is go pink. Well, it's one of my favorite <laughs> colors, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for letting me come on. Yep, and we will have you back in future months. We'll yeah. Give us updates. Yeah, definitely will. I'll see you guys. Dancing tortoise. Do we have Emily yet? I think she's just in the other room. Okay, we'll have Emily come on. I am going to open our first treat uh, from Kim. Um, 
I have never had any of these collector boosters before. They're like special fancy ones. If you don't play Magic, they are like all the cards are fancy in some way. Uh, and this is their set that um, is um, based on like 1920s gangster stuff. So what do we got? Is there a Triome? It's not a Triome. It is something cool, though. Ooh, ooh. There's a Mythic in here. There's, wow, there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, so, um, wow, this has five rares. That's pretty cool. Um, so, I am going to find someone to send uh, some of these cards to, is the idea. Uh, and so, uh, what are we going to have me sign these with? Do we have... Uh, uh, we have some metallic pens. We have some metallic right pens. Here. Yes. Uh, hopefully they write well. I don't know if these write on cards mm -hmm. well, but... Well, we will figure it we out. We will figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Which one of these do I want? I'm going to keep one. I'm going to give the rest to you guys. Hmm. And he's talking about people in the room, not people in the chat. Sorry. Yes. We're going to keep everything. <laughs> What's that? No, I'm just uh -oh. making a stupid joke. It's all I do. This look at this mountain. Oh, that's this really cool. It's really gorgeous. I know a lot of people are hoping uh, to see them. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Do you want to hold them up for people to see what we got? I will zoom in. Can we can we do that? So, we have a shiny treasure token, which is actually uh, ridiculously the thing I think I'm going to pick for me. That's my treat. And then we got a scheming fence. Um, and we got we got a mythic angel. Uh, I got to show you guys this mountain. Look at this mountain. We got this really shiny, cool mountain. And that's the one that you picked? I picked oh. a treasure token, oh, okay. which is kind of an odd thing. We've got some we've got some charms in here. We've got a shakedown heavy. Uh, we've got a Crash the Party, which I think is a Commander uh, card. Oh, it's not shiny. I don't know why I'm wiggling it. Um, so, yeah. All right. So, um, what we're going to do is... Uh, oh, ooh, we have a Cloaked and Mysterious figure here. Come, Cloaked and Mysterious figure, and join us. <laughs> um, hello, Cloaked and Mysterious figure. Who are you? Oh, you did get do it. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to actually do the costume. Is it hard to keep one of your eyes closed? Uh-huh. <laughs> when did you decide you were actually going to do the costume? Like a week ago. Yeah? <laughs> well, that's not that far off from when I decided I was going to do mine. So, um, so, yeah, I didn't know you were going to actually be in costume. Well, well, you know. Well, well, I am maidenless no more. If you... <laughs> <laughs> if you have played Elden Ring, that will make sense to you. Um, so this is Melina. No, I'm Emelina. 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 Welcome. <laughs> uh, you don't have to keep your eye closed all the time if you don't want to. I don't know why they do the eye closed thing. It's. I was reading up about it. It's yeah. like a, well, it's very uh, mysterious. But uh -huh. apparently something happens when she opens her eye. Oh, something dangerous. Yes. Hmm. Are you wearing a contact lens? Yes. <laughs> wow, you went. Yeah, I can. You went all out. That's pretty cool. I did not know you were going to be in costume. By the way, you can pull that hair color off really well. Mm -hmm. well thank you. What are you saying? That's her natural hair. Oh, I'm sorry. I <laughs> ah, dang it. I, That's right. I, I blew it. it. I cut it and dyed it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, welcome. This is my wonderful wife, Emily. She's going to help us do fan mail. Uh, and Adam, are we ready to turn on uh, super chats? Sure. Uh, so, uh, and we, do we have that email address ready, so I can explain to people? Yep. The email address is just uh, charity at Dragon. Okay. Control. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to test super chats. If you want, if you don't know what super chat is, it's like you can pay money and donate it to the streamer. Uh, you don't have to donate money to me. I have plenty. So we are going to give it a charity. Adam, do you have that charity ready? I do. This is the charity uh, we're going to do. The charity is called Tabitha's Way. If you want to read up about it, I'm going to put the link in the description right now. Um, but uh, 
we thought we would donate to them for the upcoming holiday yeah. season. So all of this money will go straight to them. None of it goes to administration of, of Lightweaver. I pay all the administration costs for our charity. Well, and yes, Emily pays them. We pay them. Um, and so if you donate, we will get that money to the food bank. If you donate $20 or more, I will sign one of these cards randomly in the, and uh, I will send them to you. Um, and Well, Becky will send them to you. Uh, if you want to get the card, the only way you've been felt able to figure out how to do this, it's kind of awkward because YouTube doesn't let us direct message you or anything. Uh, as far as we know, tell us in the chat if there's a way to do that. But what we're suggesting is if you donate, um, also send us an email uh, to charity at dragonsteel. Dragon charity at dragonsteel. Cha charity at dragonsteel.com with your username on YouTube. And um becky is going to write down all the usernames and she's going to collect the cards and she's going to send you one of these random sign cards from this pack i'm going to sign them all and hand them to her and she is just going to she has no idea which ones are good or bad she's just going to send them to you uh and um as a thank you then you get a little signed card and you know something goes to charity and we get to test and see if super chats uh how they work and if we want to do more of this in the future um, and Tabitha's Way is an awesome charity. Cha they Tabitha's Way is an awesome charity. In the local area. So. And we would <laughs> like to do a little bit more. Um, actually, the art in these is so pretty. I'm going to be signing these across the text, so you may have to look up what your card to does after you get it. Um, and and um, we already have a couple, and the first one is from Ben Parrish with a great question. Okay, go for it. Um, they say... Hank Green recently reacted to you signing the Lost Medal and asked the question, which author has signed the most books, do you think? Uh, which author has signed the most books? They actually have records for this in, um, in, um, in the Guinness Book of World Records, but usually that's the book signing in, the, uh, in one sitting. What do I think? Who do I think has signed the most books? Uh, probably... Hmm. Who do I think signed the most? I don't know, because like some of the people who uh, who sign books, they um, depends on if you count the yeah. Auto do they auto pen? I don't think the auto pen counts. Um, I don't. So the, the they're out. Um, who who does lots of signings that are really big? I know Kevin Anderson used to Kevin have the Anderson record for the used single to have signing. that record. Yeah, uh, in the singles, but then he got beaten by somebody else. Um, most books signed. I'm going to guess it's some business guru. That's who I'm going to guess. Mm -hmm. I'm going to guess it's, it, it's like Stephen Covey or somebody mm -hmm. like that, that you can get a signed book when you sign up for their workshops. And so they sell a lot of signed books to their workshops. That's who I'm going to guess. And that one's mine. I get to keep that one. Well, and I got to say, we have a lot of these coming in. Yeah. Um, super generous of you guys. Thank yeah. you so much. Uh, that's awesome. Do we need to turn off the Super Chats for a little bit, or do we not have so many that we need um, to worry about it? <laughs> <laughs> we have it. If we give long answers like that every time, we may want to turn them off. But um, let's see. Let's, let's start doing The next more. one is from uh, Joel. They mm -hmm. say, are there heralds from the Stormlight inspired in any way by the Watchers slash Angels from the Book of Enoch? Uh, ooh. Uh, well, yes, there's a roundabout answer to this. Ooh, this is this this cool angel. I'm going to sign that right over here so it's not across all the art. Um, so that's a good one to ask. So yes, in a way. So the Herald started um, as me wanting to do uh, fantasy angels, some sort of fantastical angel thing, because I knew I was going to be doing the shards of Adenalsium and things like that, and I wanted something that was basically lower tier, if that makes sense. And the first idea was for someone who thought they were one of these mythical angels come back to save the world. And then we weren't sure if they actually were one or weren't. Um, and this ended up in Way of Kings Prime. Um, and I, for a long time, was not sure if um, I was going to make this person actually an angel or not. And so I'm going to say yes to this one uh, because... Uh, it was a direct attempt to build something like servants of God sort of thing that go and work among people was, was the inspiration. And we're getting so many. Okay. I think we may need to pause it. Let's pause it for a little bit. We'll yeah. pause it until we catch up on Super Chats, and then if we have time, we'll turn it up, which means I need to open another one of these and 
Um, hope that I get a trium. Come on, trium. <laughs> Come on, trium. What do we get? What do we get? Is it still zoomed in, Adam? Uh, it is not. Okay, it's fine. We have another treasure token. We have, is it a trium? No, but it is, there is a super cool cat. And there's a Praetor. Wow. Okay, so we got we got a we got a alternate art Praetor, and we got a really cool looking streetwise mentor. Um, which one am I gonna take? What do I care about? Um, see these these are my treats too. Wow, these are really pretty. Brandon has been known to motivate himself. With magic, with magic cards. cards. I have been known to motivate myself with magic cards. When he has something cards. he doesn't want to do, then he's like, yep. okay, if I do this thing, I can open a pack of magic cards. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to take this super cool looking cat. Rigo, Streetwise Mentor. Is it that, or am I going to take Urabras, Her Heretic Praetor? Emily, I think you need to save that costume and just be a hobbit. Be a hobbit? <laughs> be a hobbit? <laughs> it, you are kind of hobbit-esque. Um, all right, I'm going to... And a hobbit with an awesome, badass tattoo on their face? <laughs> yeah. That's even better. Yeah. I know that hobbits do the tattoo. Well, no, that's what makes you awesome. I'm like a biker chick hobbit? Sure. <laughs> I'm going to take the cat because I think Joel might want to build a kitty cat deck. Mm. And this is a very pretty looking cool, cool kitty cat. So he is a cat nice. citizen. It's a shiny cat citizen. So I'm going to sign the rest of these, and we're going to start answering some more of these questions. Yep, and uh, we I'm may want to try and, and go faster. The next one is okay. from Justin Fleeson with okay. a $50 donation. Cool. Thanks, Justin. Uh, they say, I use Jada Font of Hope as my commander. Who do you use? Uh, so my – I don't know how to pronounce her name. My favorite commander is Marik from uh, way back when. I like like old school legends as my commanders. Um because Legends is the first pack of magic cards I ever bought, uh, the first expansion, back when it was like brand new, when Legends first came out. Uh, and um, well, and so I like the old school ones. And she's one of the only ones that's still good enough to, to, to play. Uh, so she's, she's the one that c takes control of other uh, people's, uh, uh, other people's car uh, creatures. So... Uh, the next question is from Isaac Wolverton with a $40 mm -hmm. donation. Uh, they say, hi, Brandon. Hi. Do you like playing board games? If so, what is your favorite board game? I am board game boring. Um, all of my friends love board games. And I usually don't play that many board games. Um, I play whatever people want. And they bring me all these cool ones. Uh, but I am, I am boring. Like, if I pick a board game... I'm going to probably just pick like something obvious like Settlers um, or something like that. And so, yeah. And Linus Carlson mm -hmm. with a $20, a 20 euro donation says, hi from Finland. Hi. Hi back. And That's awesome. XX Chaos XX says, what is your favorite food that you can cook yourself? Uh, my favorite food, we have to, is it, do I have to say... I usually say mac and cheese, which I'm fully capable, and I make a pretty mean mac and cheese. Uh, but I was going to say Kraft Mac doesn't count as food. But. Kraft Mac doesn't count as food. <laughs> Emily does not like Kraft Mac and cheese, which I do. Uh, it, is my, it is my guilty pleasure of, um, of gross stuff that I like to eat. Um, but um, you like frozen burritos. So, I do. Uh, you, you have nowhere to, n mm. no ground to stand on with this. Ooh, this is really pretty art. I'm going to sign it right over there. Um, and so, uh, but sometimes I have to say popcorn because I legit love popcorn. Not kettle corn. No. Kettle corn is like, do you know how in a lot of, um, a lot of books they have mimics that like mimic a treasure chest or something? Kettle corn is popcorn mimic. It draws you in with the idea of delicious, wonderful popcorn you're going to eat and then Instead, it's awful. Like mimic tear, just not quite yes. as good. Yep. <laughs> All right. Brandon makes really awesome popcorn, like not microwave popcorn. Yep. You know, on the stove, get get the really good quality kernels, and you know, carefully choose the oil to go with them. Ma'am, I don't it's know if you awesome. can you go find one of those gold sharpies from the signing boxes. Do you know where those one of those might be? Oh uh, well, don't go to the warehouse. Uh, Becky's got one. Becky can get one. 
All right. Now, I'm going to give you a reminder. Ooh, the cool, fancy treasure token. I'm going to give you a reminder that uh, if you donated $20 or more, send us an email to charity at brandonsanderson.com with your address. Charity at Dragonsteel. Charity, charity at Dragonsteel. Sorry, not Brandon Sanderson. Charity at Dragonsteel.com. Although maybe we should make an alias. With, uh, with your address um that you want the card sent to and it can be sent to anybody you can have it sent to someone else and we'll buy some hard uh little sleeve things to put these in and becky will send them all off to you guys and if you don't want a card don't email yeah. us don't email us if you just want to donate uh then that's totally fine we are cool with that so brandon gets more treats i get more treats <laughs> i'm gonna open a third box and you keep yep. uh, packing you keep going uh the brb ninja says uh-huh which Magic the Gathering character or artifact do you think would fit most well within the Cosmere? Has there ever been anything from Magic that inspired anything in your writing? Uh, so, Whisper Silk Cloak, we often joke, mm-hmm. would make a nice mist cloak. Uh, I would love to, to have Whisper Silk Cloak get an altar of that as a mist cloak. But there's a ton. Like, they have Sky Eels, and I have Sky Eels. That would probably just be the most natural match. They didn't inspire each other, as far as I know. I was developing Roshar, and then this thing came out, and we both had Sky Eels. Um, what in Magic has, has inspired me? I don't know. I think that the jumping to different planes has got to have been partially inspiration. Mm-hmm. Like, we kind of came up to this uh, with this about the same time. Like, I was developing the Cosmere at the same time Magic was doing a lot of this stuff. But, uh, and I think we're both really inspired by Spelljammer for that. If you guys know your old um, D&D lore, I, I would be surprised if Spelljammer were not an inspiration for them, and I know it was one for me. Um, but I don't know that there's, you know, sometimes I see the card art, and I think, that looks really cool. I should do something like that. Uh, that happens a lot. I'm not sure if there's any specifics I can point to other than that. Ooh, I love these gold ones. Did you already get this one prime? Yes, perfect. Um, so let's see. let's see what we got. We've got a... Foily Structural Assault, a Diabolist. Uh, ooh, a Mysterious Limousine. That's a cool title. <laughs> I um, love it. Um, and ooh, there's a d- Demon Dragon. Okay, I got to take the Demon Dragon for myself because, mm. uh, you know, uh, Demon Dragon. These lands are just so pretty. Um, so I'm going to take the Demon Dragon as my treat. Ooh, look at the demon dragon. And I really should have set up another camera. I apologize. We will do that. If we do more of this in the future, we'll yeah. set up another ca- camera. Uh, so keep keep me going, Adam. What do we got? The next one is from Elijah mm-hmm. Ludwig. Uh-huh. Um, here's 100 Australian buckaroos. Woo! Thanks for all the fun. Thank wow. you, Elijah. Well, that's- I love didgeridoo dollars. <laughs> <laughs> William Brawl says... If he didn't shave, what color would Sazed's hair be? Uh, if say didn't shave, it, they would it would be black. Fortis Vita says, "Great costume, happy Halloween." Happy Halloween to you. Here's a here's a dancing tortoise for you. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it's dancing when I do that, doesn't it? Connor Chamberlain <laughs> says. As a fan artist, I always love knowing what you'd like to see depicted by the community. Are there any moments you'd like to see that you haven't before? Ooh, that's an excellent question. Mm, that's a good question. Ah, moments I want to see. Let's see. I've The ones I've said, I have seen people depict. Um, and so, you know what I've never seen? Tom Marilyn sitting above the end of all things in the last book of Wheel of Time. Sitting up there and uh, composing poetry. Uh, as the world ends. Mm. So I would like to see that. Uh, I think this pen looks wonderful. So look, I signed I signed the foily shiny mountain on the side with a shiny signature. Emily, so. did you want a water? Uh, sure, that would be great. And why don't oh. you open one of those uh, one of those All right. those Thank fan you. mails? We're gonna s- we're gonna send these uh, cards to fan mail people too. So if you sent in a fan mail then we are going to send this, uh, send you a card also. So Emily's going to pick one of those, and I'll answer another question while we're doing that. Wow, where's yeah, because I need to look through it. Mm-hmm. I can see if I can actually read it without my glasses on. Mm. Park Heights Maverick. Do you got another? Oh, Adam wanted Sorry. Um, That's okay, Adam. You're fine. Yeah, we're having... Mm. 
um, error oh. saying that they're getting bounced back on that email address. So I'm oh. just going to try and text our IT guy, which I guess I can do from my computer. Yeah. Because I need to find do we, my... So we forgot to have somebody test it ahead of time. I mentioned that, but then we were yeah, so busy. Um, we never had anyone actually go and check it. Um, we may need to go... Um, Octavia, are you here? Yep. Will you go make a Gmail address just so that we have one in case this never wor doesn't end up working? Well, um, we have some other questions. Yes. Uh, uh -huh. The next one is from Ray Lawler uh, with a $100 donation wow. saying, Yay, charity. And I agree. <laughs> Yay, charity. Mm. Evil Monkey 3210 says, Who is your favorite planeswalker? Uh, my pla favorite planeswalker. Ooh. Uh, Davriel. Obviously. Oh, obviously. That's, that's the obvious answer. But favorite planeswalker I didn't design uh, and didn't create. Um, let's see. Um, I would say Tamio. Uh, I love Tamio's aesthetic. I love the, the stuff that she does. I, I'm very annoyed that she has uh, been taken over by Phyrexians. Um, but, uh, yeah. So. Ooh, what do we got there, Em? This is awesome. Ooh, you yeah. want you should hold it up and show it. <laughs> nice, so nice. So first of all, the address uh, it is to Dalinar Colon. Ah, yes. Care of Dragon Soul Entertainment. Uh huh. And uh, the card says, "Just me checking out your nice butt." <laughs> is there a question and in it? Inside. Mm hmm. It says, "Dalinar, me again, checking it twice <laughs> because." <laughs> Yep. Christmas cat. Yep. Dalinar does have a nice butt. Yes. And uh, there is P.S. to Mr. Sanderson. Lyft could use a parent figure. It's from a concerned mom, friend of Lyft. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> we will work very hard on getting Lyft a parent figure. Um, we will see how that goes. She's had, had a rough time. <laughs> so thank you very much for the card. Um, and Adam might post how you could send us uh, things at some point. Yeah, I will post something yeah. in the chat as soon as we have it's, a solution. But we need to first figure out how oh, to get the email address yes, working. That, yeah, that's yes, what I'll get figured bouncing. first. So uh, hit me with another question, yep. Adam. Karis and I with mm -hmm. a $20 donation. No chat, no question. Nice. Noah Earl says, heard of my favorite musician, Joe Hisashi. He's Pro, uh, prolific too with 83 movie soundtracks including the studio Gib uh, Ghibli films oh, between sweet. the both of you I always have wonderful art thanks that's awesome um, I I have listened to the Princess Mononoke soundtrack I don't know if he did that one if he did then I have listened to one of his soundtracks um, but if n he didn't end up doing that one I'm, I have listened to seen a lot of those movies but uh, uh, that's cool I'll have to look up look, uh, look him up Heliophage says, I'm sure your love for RPGs is shared by a lot of us here. Mm -hmm. Is there an RPG that you would love to sink your teeth into if you had more time? Uh, yeah, so the on the top of my list to play is the Nier, is it Nier or Neo? Uh, the, uh, the Automana. Um, they, everyone says they're very like oh, Dark Souls. Yeah, is Nier, it called Nier? Uh, something like that. Automata Nier. or yeah, Atom like that. Automana? Um, pull it up. Some people can be people automatic in the chat will be yelling like at us. But I hear that people who like Dark Souls say this is a game that if you like Dark Souls, you will like. Uh, it looks like it has robot girls that attack people with giant weapons. So that seems pretty cool. I really looking look forward to scrolling down when I'm caught up yes. with the live chat yes. to see everyone, see everyone yelling at that us. I'm pronouncing yeah. it. Uh, I think Neo and Nier are two different series, and the one that I have been told to play is Nier. Okay. But I am I could be wrong. That, I've seen that one all uh -huh. over the place. Blind right? robot girls who beat yeah. up m monsters. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's impressive. <laughs> okay, you ready for a question yes. from here? Yes, question okay. from here. Um, Kayat Sal... Oh, I'm going to have to go put my glasses oh, okay. on. <laughs> Sal Moon says, if there was a Muppets Stormlight movie, who would the one human <laughs> yeah. character be? Who would be the one human character in Muppets Stormlight? Uh, oh, man. What would, who, would, who would it be? It, it would probably have to be Kaladin, <laughs> right? Is he's the least Muppet-like? He's the least Muppet-like. And I think Muppet Dalinar would be hilarious, giving orders to people. <laughs> Uh, this little Muppet Dalinar played by Sam the Eagle. 
Um, uh, and then Kaladin um, having to go around and take all these orders from people. And yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Now I want to see that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, Henson Workshop, make it happen. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I have another one for you. Okay. This is from Kimball. It Ooh. says, I'm 10 years old and my favorite sport is soccer. I love reading. Your books are the best. Also, can you send a signed copy of your next book? And his favorite book is The Way of Kings. Um, it's his favorite book because it's long and it's good. And his question for you is, what is uh -huh. the favorite book you have ever written or read? Uh, so I don't pick my favorites that I have written because it's like picking my favorite children. Um, but um, uh, my favorite book that I've ever read, I usually list. Um, um, these days, I'm going to go with Terry Pratchett's Night Watch is mm. my favorite today. Um, so That's a great one. That is, that is my favorite of this very moment. Ooh, look, look what we got this time. We got a Kraken. We got a giant Kraken. Ooh, nice. We got nice. a foil shiny Kraken. Um, oh, oh, oh. We have a Triome. We oh. finally got one. Yay. 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 We got a Triome. That's what I get. Xander's Lounge right here. There we go. I get my Triome. So, do they put more than one in a pack? I have no idea what triumphs are. So, triumphs are a, a fancy land that are okay. one of the rares. These have like five or six rares in them, so you have a good okay. shot at getting one. Uh, and I need to add them to my to my cube. Uh, and so, hmm, we got a gavel of the righteous. Um, that sounds interesting. We got a uh, a fancy ledger shredder. I know that's uh, people are liking that. And we got we got a cool kraken. Um, so I'm going to start signing some of these and you're going to hit me with uh, more questions. Yep. How many, how many more do we have over uh, there? Still? We dozens? have a good amount. Okay. Probably. <laughs> okay. Uh, Van, uh, Graham says, do you ever find yourself needing to problem solve whilst writing a first draft? What is your method for overcoming any narrative hurdles or fleshing certain ideas out? Um, Ooh. Okay. Um, so Yes. I run, in, run into trouble with that all the time. Um, and for me, it kind of comes down to um, my goals, right? I reassess my goals. What am I trying to accomplish with this specific scene? Why am I writing it? Um, what, what, how does it lead to the big things I want to have happen in the future? Uh, and I kind of go back to basics on those things if I'm ever having, having trouble with a particular sequence. Um, this doesn't happen as often in outlining as it does in writing. Usually you outline and you're like, oh, that's pretty cool. That'll work. And then you get there in the book. You're like, no, this does not work at all. Uh, and you need to fix it then. But in outlining, it's much easier to fix because I can kind of go back to basics. Just like, why, why is this scene here? What's it trying to accomplish? Uh, Michael Conyers mm -hmm. says next video game. Next video game that I'm going to play um <laughs> or design i guess you can design. say that now <laughs> i would love to design actual video games not just the the uh ooh, look at that forest oh that forest is gorgeous mm. i'm gonna send that to somebody you're gonna yeah i hope you guys whoever yeah i hope who gets that forest appreciates it. it's gorgeous um so the next game i'm going to play um the, there's a dlc for doom eternal that I want to play, and I haven't played that. Uh, but I have Sando Rimo starting tomorrow, where I have to mm -hmm. like be nose to the grindstone to get uh, Stormlight ridden. So I don't know if I will have time to play a video game until the Chris until yeah, Christmas time. Christmas, Usually time Christmas time. Uh, I would like to play the new. Um, oh, there's another card under there. I would like to play the new uh, Metroid. Joel played it and really liked it, and I haven't been able to play that. So maybe the new Metroid. Michael uh, Liebig says, hey, Brandon, hey. first off, I want to say thank you for getting me back into reading with Mistborn. My pleasure. My question is, if you could choose one of your books to be studied in schools, what would it be and why? One of my books to be studied in schools and what would it be and why? Um, I would pick Way of Kings because if it's being studied in schools, that means that I finished the series really well because otherwise... 
Oh, wait, it, I could finish it poorly and it still would be studied. I'm going to assume <laughs> that it'll be studied in schools because I finished the series really well. Um, and so that uh, would give me the, uh, the knowledge that this is all going to work out and all the crazy plans I have for it uh, are going to be awesome. So, uh, The Adventures of Wu says, uh, Video game controller dances goofily under the word woot. I don't know what that means. Okay. Well, uh, thank, thank you, you for, for sharing yeah. anyway. And thank you for the donation. <laughs> yeah. TK1337 mm-hmm. uh, says, Watching from the Death Star on our way to some backwater moon of Yavin. <laughs> Something about some insurgents. I honestly can't tell through this helmet. Anyway, love the stream. Life before, I mean, <laughs> for the Empire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. That's awesome. Do you have one there, Em? Well... Ben was saying we need to look at this. Have yes. we checked this out? Oh, let's check it out. What do we got? Ooh, ooh! It. Now there's there's a mug. Wow! Uh, show that off. Oh, that is awesome. Wow! There's a very talented person who has made that for us. Yeah, do gives, we know who that was? Well, it's got a paper in here. So. Oh, let's pull the paper out. But then look the at spikes, that. yeah. Spikes going all the way through. Mm-hmm. You can have a, a nice cup of hot chocolate that's uh, that's been spiked. It gives my uh, Admiral Akbar mug. A good run for its money. <laughs> yeah, that it does. I think that it would get along well with your Admiral Akbar mug. Let's see. So this is Will Fisher. And Will says, I am a potter and I really enjoy reading your books. I hey. love all the references you make to pottery and other arts and crafts. I can tell from your writing that you have an astute understanding of the craft. Um, let's see. Oh, this is nice. When I reached the Aiden chapter in Rhythm of War, I was even further immersed into your world in a way that few other books have done for me. Ah. Through the small details, you've made a magical series even more special to me. Thank you for doing what you do, and I look forward to seeing how your stories unfold. Thank you so much. That is a really awesome thing. We should put that up on our streaming shelf thing here. It's awesome. So maybe you'll see that on the stream in, uh, in future. Oh, for, that would be awesome down here. Look, look at this cool dragon that I got that I'm totally yoinking out of this pack. <laughs> it's like alternate art, uh, art deco dragon, Ooh. Uh, legendary dragon thing uh, with this really cool art on it. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if it's powerful, but I'm taking it, and I'm going to sign the rest of these. Isaac Betzold says, mm-hmm. when will we see the edge dancers in midwifery? They would be great at it. They would be great at it, and I think you're going to start seeing a lot uh, of that sort of stuff happening and the near future in the books. Uh, good question. Jake Reiser says, just giving to charity and hopefully a card, LOL, happy Halloween. Awesome. Well, LOL, happy Halloween to you. How we got, how's, our, how's our email thing going? Uh, ben is looking at it right now, but mm-hmm. he hasn't gotten back to me since he said that. We do have a backup one made if we just want to do that Let's one for now. Let's just do the backup one. Okay. Do we know we can, get, we can access it? It's been yep. Tested. And it's been tested. So, um, this is charitydragonsteel at gmail.com. Charity Dragonsteel. So that's no period. Just Yep, I'll charity. put it in the chat right put now. Put it in the chat. If you sent us a donation um, for $20 or more, send, uh, send us an email with your address, and we will send you at least one card. We might have extras, so you might get multiple cards. Sorry. Charity Dragonsteel at gmail. Ooh, that's a pretty one. I'm going to sign that one across Look, the text. Look, I got fan mail. You got fan mail yeah. to Emily. It says Emily Sanderson. Nice. Care of Dragon Still Entertainment. And it's a card from Moxie and Florence, the cats. Aw. Because um, last time on the Halloween chat, when I read fan mail, I talked about mm-hmm. my cat. So Excellent. I'm going to take this and put it on my little bulletin board. Is that your first piece of fan mail? People, people give me things... Like when you travel. That's true. They send, Lots they of chocolates. send things. Yes. Yeah, they send me chocolate. Mm-hmm. We got a but. Maestro's Ascendancy here for somebody. Ooh. I signed on the table. It's a pretty treasure card. I don't know what that means. Yep. Dwayne Fernandez says, mm-hmm. hey, guys, love the stream and costumes. Just wanted to say thank you for all you do. Well, awesome. Here's a dancing turtle for you. <laughs> 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 and a dancing turtle. <laughs> Benjamin McComb says, you're limited to only one bubble tea pop topping slash filling and flavor for the rest of time. Wow. What is it? 
Uh, so I actually like the the jelly, the lychee jelly better than I like the actual uh, bubbles, the bobas. And so I would go with uh, lychee jelly and flavor is probably going to be strawberry. It's my go-to. Um, I'm never sad to get strawberry. I do like to have variety, but uh, we're getting to bubble tea season here pretty soon. What did we get? We got another cat. Well, I have to get that for Joel, don't I? Except... Nope, we got another Triome. So I'm going to take that. <laughs> Yay. I'm actually going to use Brandon's prerogative and get the cat for Joel and the Triome for me. Because I think we have lots of these. That's a nice looking Triome right there. I have to say I love the next question from Dr. Loin. Okay. <laughs> Do you identify as a dog or a tortoise? Uh, <laughs> so let me explain this to people who don't understand. Uh, in the Elden Ring, in the, the Dark Souls style games, you um, get to, um, you can leave messages for other players, but the, in order to keep you from be- going a little too far, as the internet is known to do, they limit the, the words to a bunch of words that you can choose among. But they didn't have turtle as one of the options. They just had dog. And so if you go to see Muriel, who I'm dressed at, if you're joining us late, I am Muriel, uh, pastor of the Church of Vows uh, from Elden Ring. Uh, If you go to see Muriel, you'll find written outside dog, dog ahead, dog, dog, dog. Uh, And so I identify as a dog because, you know, um, it's it's the only word. Apparently the word turtle doesn't exist or tortoise in uh, Elden Ring world, so... So I'm, I'm going to say dog. Uh, it's an excellent question. Uh, I thought so as well. Very amusing. Well done. Um, the things that people come up with the, with those limited, uh, those limited uh, um, word salads that they can put together are pretty clever. Uh, and boy, do they try to be vulgar. They try <laughs> and fail to be vulgar, but it, it's so amusing. Um, but I do remember multiple times reading Glorious Chest Ahead, um, which is uh, an example of the sort of things that they come up with. Uh, Rob Harvey says, Happy Halloween. Thanks for doing this. Great idea. Awesome. And Taylor Smith says, Let's go. Taylor Smith? (laughs) Not Taylor Swift. Oh, (laughs) If it was Taylor Swift, I would have a different reaction. Mm. (laughs) Did you know that um, she has all of Billboard's top ten off her new album? Yeah, I heard about that. It's wow. the only time it's ever happened, and it's the first time ever um, there's not been a man on the list, which oh. I found interesting. Now, that is really interesting. Um, I do remember back when George had the top five slots on the New York Times list, I believe, at one point, or top four, um, which was pretty cool. But um, but yeah, um, that is that is quite the accomplishment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very talented. Uh, do you got another one here for us, Sam? Yeah. This one says, howdy, my name is Rhea, and I'm 13. Hi, Rhea. And Rhea says, I am a 100% will shaper. Excellent. I love freedom and self-expression. Mm-hmm. And Rhea says, I love the rep of different people in your books. Well, thank um, you, Rhea. Because not being represented is hard. And then Rhea also says, P.S. I've always thought that my name sounded very Rosharan. So if you ever like, oh, no, what should I name this random character? I suggest Rhea. Rhea sounds like an excellent name for a will shaper. Someone write that down for me, and we'll see what we can do about it. Um, oh, look at this, Adam. Look, look what I just opened. Dog. <gasps> <laughs> Scripted. It's a dog. It's a dog token that just says dog. It's the strangest now looking you, dog I've ever seen, though. You have to keep that right <laughs> I have now. to keep this one. It says dog. <laughs> okay, I'm keeping the dog. I'm keeping the dog. Uh, what else we got? We got a tenacious underdog in this one. Hmm. Um, all seeing arbiter. Ooh, ooh, that one's pretty cool. A legendary artifact or a legendary equipment. All kinds of fun stuff in here. All right, hit me, Adam. What else we got? From the sixth scholar. Uh huh. They say, I no, love this. I don't have a question, but want to take part in giving to charity. Ah. I'll send an email, but Octavia knows how to get a hold of me. Okay. Okay. TikTok. Oh, TikTok? Oh. Okay. Montana Atwood says, Team Ronnie or Team Melina? 
I think that has to be. That's an Elden yeah. Ring reference. Yeah, well. I, mean, I, I read up on Melina, so I know a little bit about I, it. I think I have to pick Melina yeah. uh, since she is sitting right here, and I declared myself maidenless no longer. That's right. Um, <laughs> You'd be in uh, big trouble if you didn't pick If Melina. you don't know, um, it, it is quite amusing. I don't know if they knew how it would translate into English, but mm. in Elden Ring, a, they're this group called the Maidens that let you basically level up and get stronger and more powerful. And you like It's like a, a, a religious class or something. But when you first come out, there's like a guy out there is like, oh, you have no maiden. You are maidenless. Uh, and it is quite the meme um, about people who are maidenless. Um, so, Adrian Burnett says, mm-hmm. what music have you been listening to in general and or while you write? So lately, it's all been uh, lo-fi hip-hop girl. Um, oh, that's yeah, my go-to as well. Uh, it's just so good. Yeah, it's my homework music, uh, I should say it's now. It's so good for writing. It's mm-hmm. so good for... Uh, and then for working out, I found a list of house or techno versions of famous songs that is just a big, long list from different artists and things like that. And it's been hilarious to just hear, you know, house versions of various songs uh, and things like that. It's good for working out. Um, so if you will... Um, ever want to listen to my playlist i do post some of my playlists online in fact i made one for secret project three which i'll post next summer when it comes out uh i do them all on spotify so sign some more of these we just i just signed a darling of the masses and a rob the archives so and sanguine saint says what was your favorite elden ring weapon uh the gut sword um i just uh, i always i love the gut sword just in basically every Dark Souls version, and I liked it a lot in this one. So uh, I would say my the one I found the most amusing was probably the giant finger. Have you found the giant finger, Adam? Oh, yeah. It's a, just a giant finger, like from it's one been of a those minute spider since I played, things, but I think I saw videos that has from, rings yeah. on it, and so you can give people the finger by smashing them overhead with a giant finger. Uh, they like to do goofy stuff with some of these weapons. Andrew Sterling McDonald says, could a drab become a returned? Raffo. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Raffo. All right. All right. Uh, are you capable of giving them the card that I write Raffo on? Mm-hmm. Can you remember who this is, Becky? I'm going to write Raffo. Right here. Andrew Sterling. Oh, yep. So make sure you email us because I have the All Sing Arbiter. Uh, this <laughs> mythic that I had. That card looks I figure, awesome. I figure that if it's called the All Sing Arbiter, it's a good one to come raffoed from me. Uh, and I have signed it for you with a raffo on it. Okay. So there you are. Let's take that one right now. Uh, and, and a Pegasus I just signed. So there we go. Again, if you guys are coming late, uh, Tim Shields, who runs Cascade Games, sent us these uh, these packs, which is why we are opening cool packs and sending them to people. So, Tim, you're awesome. Thank you so much. Um, it's not like an official um, sponsorship or anything. He just is a nice guy and likes to send things uh, to me. And he takes care of me when I go to conventions and I need a place to do magic drafts with fans. He often takes care of us. And so he's just all, all around awesome. And he sent us some of these things. And so... Thank you, Tim. And uh, if you're coming late, I am the the Turtle Pope from Elden Ring. Um, and I am Emmalina from Elden Ring. <laughs> uh, and we are uh, sending people magic cards f- and opening, for some reason because I came up with some weird idea to send people magic cards. And opening fan mail. And opening fan mail. And you, I want you to know that we read all of these. We don't read all of them on stream, but we read all of them. So. Look, <laughs> I got now cat. Hey. <laughs> Now you got to keep that one. I got to keep the kitty cat. Joel's mm-hmm. going to yoink it from you. Yes, he is. All right, you're going to give me another one, Emily? Let's see. What was a good one? Um, Kaylee, who was 11, says, Will Mbot be restored again? I hope so. He is the best. He should be called Mushroombot, the massacre of Krell. I agree. That is a raffo to you also. <laughs> um, oh, I'm going to Haley got a raffo. Haley, too. I'm gonna I'm gonna raffle Haley. you on this cat. This is a different cat. R A F O. Oh wait. Okay. This this we're gonna send to her. Well we've um, got an envelope, so we can We got it. an envelope. So make I'm sending that one to you, Em. It's wet, okay? Okay. Oh oh my legs are falling apart. Okay. Okay. So 
I found a cat in here for Joel's cat deck. He's going to have to make a cat deck now because I'm going to give him all these cats. Um, the next one is from Philip Clapper. Uh-huh. They say, if Halloween existed on Roshar, what would Dalinar, Shalon, Kaladin, and Wit go as for their costume? <laughs> Uh, they can't yeah. not wear one, but if you don't have time for all of them, choose who you want to answer for. Mm. Okay. So Shalon would go as a dozen different things changing through the night. Uh, Dalinar would reluctantly go as a couple's costume with, with Navani. Navani. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he would, would let grumble her decide, about And he would grumble at it. Kaladin would just say, I'm a bridge leader or something dumb like that and try to get away <laughs> with something he already has. Like maybe somebody that I know that just went to Halloween as a golfer wearing his golfing <laughs> outfit. Hey, that was an order for my child to look adorable. <laughs> Your um, child did look adorable. He did look adorable. So, Gallon will try to get away with doing that, and I don't think that the rest will let him, but that's what mm. he's going to try to do, right? He'll show up and be like, he'll, he'll wear like a jacket from another uh, another officer and be like, I'm I'm a bridge leader from like you know a different uh, different high prince or something, and they're like, no, you can't do that. Something like the equivalent of dressing up as a muggle for Halloween yes. here. Yeah, yeah, something like dressing up as a muggle. Yep. Uh, Matt Sat Spot. I I don't know how to pronounce it. I apologize. Uh, you talked previously about how you plan to outline the next Mistborn trilogy all at the same time. Yes. What are the advantages or disadvantages of outlining those books concurrently for you compared to doing them one at a time? So the advantages is very simply that I can make sure the foreshadowing works. Uh, Stormlight Archive, it's working pretty well because I did really big outlines. And what you can find is that things that are going to be happening in book five are well foreshadowed in book one. Uh, and things that are happening in book 10 when we get there are well foreshadowed uh, in books one and two and things like that. Uh, the disadvantage is um, spending that much time on one series is really draining. Like outlining it and writing it straight through like I'm going to do uh, gets very overwhelming. Uh, and, you know, it doesn't give you sometimes the creative freedom to go jump and do weird things. Like as is evidenced with my recent uh, sort of events, uh, I like to do sometimes. So... That's where Alcatraz came from. That's right? where Alcatraz came from. I wrote. You were writing Mistborn, the first Mistborn trilogy. I was, and I needed a break, and I had to write something short because I couldn't take much of a break from it, and so I wrote that. Hmm. Alaram says, "Shout out to Graphic Audio. Go listen to Brandon's books, y'all." Graphic Audio does a fantastic job. They do, and they have also been one of the big Brandon Sanderson like proponents. From the beginning, they were buying our books in like 2006 and yeah. 2007 and really pushing them. Mm -hmm. Before I was big, uh, Graphic Audio was there on the ground floor and they do the full cast audios. So shout outs to them. They are awesome. I love the team over there. Uh, they are part of recorded books now. So um, Okay, well, but, you're opening that. I'm going to yeah. open this. Okay. And uh, just to address one comment. Um, they say non super chat viewers stay strong. Yes, I did not expect this many super chats. Yeah, thank you for your patience. We won't be doing this uh, every stream, but we figure for uh, for charity, this is a good time uh, to to be doing it. Um, and if we want to, Adam, we could have you come up with another place that people can send, uh, and then we could give all the ex extras uh, uh, as uh, send to some of them if they wanted to enter like a contest or something like that. Because we'll have extra signed things for people who can't didn't super chat. Uh, probably. Do you do you want to um, come up with an email just for them? Yep. To send give to? me one second. Um, if you do that, then we will want to sort this through afterward, uh, rather than telling you on the stream. Um, and so, ooh, I got a raccoon. Ooh, not <laughs> as cool as a dog and a cat. No. I got a wiretapping card. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> amusing. Mm. Check out what I got. What'd you get? Ooh. Oh, it's a bee money. A crochet oh. bee money. Where's Mem? I, I know you. I, yeah. But. And? An e money. A crochet e money. That is so cool. This is from our friend Christy. Christy Kugler. Oh, Christy made those? Yes. Oh, Christy. Did a great job. Christy. Christy has been She's editing so books awesome. for us lately and doing just an amazing job. Oh, it has a little tiny black lotus. Oh. That's adorable. <laughs> That's the coolest thing ever. 
All right, I'm going to take the island out of this one because it is the most powerful card in Magic. So if you want to enter for a chance to win whatever extra cards we have, yep. I don't know how many that will be, Yep. send an email to contest at brandonsanderson.com and we will randomly select whatever, whatever number we of have cards left. we have left. Yep, yep. We're just gonna, I'm just going to open these and sign a whole bunch of them and whatever we got left. So if you're feeling left out, then do that. And uh, we will send some of these cards out to you guys as well. Uh, this next question from Mason Wheeler says, if you had to have another author finish your work, who would you pick? So I've lately been saying, I, or historically I've said Brian McClellan. Uh, he never gave his consent to this, but, uh, <laughs> um, but Brian uh, and I write uh, very similarly. He's a great writer. He's a good friend. Um, that said, if we get, um, get, uh, Dan really steeped in the Cosmere and he starts writing books, uh, that have the right feel, like we're not sure how much his books will be Dan books and how much it will be Brandon books. Uh, we do want them to feel like Dan books, but it's possible that Dan or Isaac might be the right answer. Uh, as we get them just, as we get further along in the Cosmere, um, so we got a cool mythic foil um extended art uh sword that i just signed so somebody's gonna get that and an ogre <laughs> so we'll have to send a card to christy for uh for yeah. sending us uh an e money and a b money yeah those are awesome caden wants to know which herald would be the most interesting to have a conversation with which Herald would be the most interesting to have a conversation with? I'm going to go, depends on your definition of interesting, but probably Ashar. Mm. And I'm going to say not Tom. <laughs> that depends on how, how, yes, yes. what the status on, of yes, people. In, in, what, uh, in, in, in what, what state. Ooh, I love this card. It's called Titan of Industry, and it's a giant elemental monster made out of skyscrapers. Uh, it's just a cool idea. Um, so, uh, I'm going to take that one. Coatlin Barney says, is Spook still alive? Oh, uh, Raffo. Ooh, you're getting a Raffo. Mm. What am I going to, what am I going to write the Raffo on? Um, should I write it on a sewer crocodile or a fatal <laughs> grudge? A suspicious bookcase. It's going on a suspicious, suspicious bookcase. Book definitely. <laughs> That's great. Uh, make a note of that one if you would, Be Becky. Mm -hmm. Got it. Ah, uh, Raffo, you are getting a signed suspicious bookcase with Raffo on it. Um, <laughs> make note which card I said I was going to give to them as well. Uh, so, yes, what, what an interesting question, Raffo. And Kyra Call says, in a recent Intentionally Blank, you mentioned a Lyft Food Heist book. Any chance of the novella between Stormlight 5 and 6 being that book? Uh, there is a chance for that, yes. That is definitely something that I would consider doing. Uh, Neil Vita says, what would Hoyd be for Halloween? Uh, Hoyd would be Kelsier just to tick him off. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yes, yes, he would. Yep. Ryan Gallagher says, what is a Magic the Gathering mechanic that you wish Wizards of the Coast would put in a set? Um, I loved Level Up. It's one of my favorite MTG mechanics. Uh, and they decided to get rid of it because they thought it was too complicated, and I think it is awesome, and they should bring it back. Um, Nithin Kumar says, The Mountain Remembers. Uh, favorite Magic the Gathering card and favorite MTG Pro player? Uh, favorite Magic Gathering card is, um, is Vesuvan Doppelganger. Uh, just happened to really, uh, really like that card. Um, and... Uh, it was one of the very first rares that I got. Uh, I like what it does. It kind of said it was Brandony and the things it does. And my favorite player is probably going to be LSV, uh, the person who streams. I haven't been on in like a year, but once in a while I, I show up. He is uh, He's the one I watch consistently. Uh, I think he's charming and interesting and has good takes on a lot of things. Uh, you can both learn a lot about magic and learn a lot about just being a, an, a good person by listening to Luis talk uh, about stuff. Uh, and um, uh, that said, there are a lot of great uh, pro players out there. 
Um, like I've enjoyed watching John Finkel uh, draft cube. In fact, him drafting cube was one of the reasons I made a cube was uh, Finkel drafting cube way back in the day. Uh, and so, yeah, there's a lot of good ones. I've watched Gabby. She doesn't stream a lot anymore. Um, uh, Tom Martell, uh, I've watched when he streams on, off and on. Um, so, um, Numat the Nummy, he's a, he's a great streamer. Um, so there's just a ton of really good magic streamers. Um, and I don't separate pro players from streamers because I just watch the streamers. I'm going to take this really cool looking Maestro's Charm. And that's my gift out of this one. And we are caught up on Super Chats. We are caught up on Super Chats. What time is it? Uh, it is 8.40. 8.40. Mmm. Mmm. So uh, we have a couple of options. Yes. Um, uh, I'm sure there are some people who would still be interested just in donating to charity, but I feel yeah. like we should maybe move to the... Some of this. And we have yeah. to do... So we have to... We're going to go through and the do... The fan mail. The fan mail. We can turn it back on to donate. We won't let you ask a question this Correct. time but if you donate twenty dollars or more we will get you a card uh because we have uh a lot of these cards and i have another whole pack that he sent me or another box so we'll just i'll just start signing those a little bit faster and we will focus on we can get questions from questions fan from mail, fan there's, mail there's some fun ones mm -hmm. but thank you in advance for your donations yep if you want to donate to tabitha's way uh which is a food bank uh, here locally in Utah. They do a lot of... They do a lot of really Primarily a food bank, but they do yeah, a lot do of Yeah, do clothing things. and things like that. Mm -hmm. And if you do $20 or more, we'll make sure to get you a card. But if you do the $20 more, or more, you have to also email us at the email that is posted below, which is Charity Dragonsteel. Charity Dragonsteel at gmail.com. Gmail I will com. put it in the chat right now. And you now. have to put your YouTube handle that you're commenting under so that we can go look through the Super Chats, and Becky will be in charge of this. Um, and you have to give us your address, or you can send, have it sent to someone else. Okay, this one, the signature went crazy, so I'm going to um, to deface it in another Turn way. Turn it into a picture? Yeah. So, uh, um, Eva H. and J.T. say, Dear best author in the universe, Mr. Sanderson. And the question they have is one of many, but they want to know if you play any instruments. I used to play the trumpet. Uh, I haven't, and since I basically went to college and um, have not had time for it, and my trumpet, my family went through some financial difficulties, and my trumpet got sold in part to pay for my mission to Korea. Um, and I haven't gotten back into it uh, since, but uh, it was a really good thing for me in high school, um, uh, whoever you give that one to, give them two, so that there's one normally signed one and one weird defaced one. Um, but um, uh, that's more of a Becky thing. Um, I found I couldn't have two masters, if that makes sense. I couldn't both be a writer and a musician. Uh, other people might be able to do that, uh, but I could not. Um, and I just dedicated myself a ton to my writing and so because of that, I had to, I just didn't have time for it. Uh, I still really love music, uh, but yep. This cool. one, you've got to look at this envelope. I don't know if you can even see it, but this is from Evelyn Crooks and she's decorated the whole envelope. Ah. With beautiful things. There's, There's a chasm fiend yes. and a jello bird. Yep. Uh, and all kinds of fun stuff. And on the back, there's a dragon. There's a doom slug, it looks like, on the front. Nice. That's probably frost dragon. Yeah. It is so a silver that's dragon. That's pretty so. awesome. I think this was the first one. Very talented. Very talented. Is there a question involved? Um, I don't see a question highlighted. Okay. That's all right. But we we'll, will read we'll that read at that. another time. Thank you for the beautiful letter. Um, and somebody's going to get a fish. It's a fish token. All right. Hand me that other box, the little one. This one? No. Yeah, that. You're going, nope. Oh, up for the magic card box. Yep. Tim sent me two of these, so we're going to pop this one open, and I'm going to be signing these because I don't know how many Super Chats are coming through, but we want to have plenty of these cards, Steve. Lots. Okay, awesome. We'll also maybe have a total next stream in a, uh, in a month or so, or maybe beyond, to say how much we raised. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
So, ooh, ooh, what would we get? We got a, we got this this thing. We're gonna give this to somebody. Gala greeters. So, thank you guys for your generosity. Um, ooh, look at that. That's a cool looking card. Somebody gets a gala greeters. This is my kind of Halloween. Magic cards. <laughs> Yeah, you don't have to go... Um, I don't have to go door-to-door. -door. They got sent to me. It's pretty awesome. I've got quite the haul here. I got a Titan of Industry and two Triumphs so far. <laughs> um, so, can we find a third Triumph? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Ooh, we got another one of these cool alternate art dragons. But I already have that one, so I'm going to send this to someone. We got a Bird Demon. Uh, do you have a question for me while Emily's looking through things, Adam? So that I we. Can, I yep. can show you um, oh, let's, let's, the edge beagles. Okay. Let's see. Windle and lift. Oh, very nice. Window and lift, the edge beagles. A very nice letter as well that we'll read later. So. Well, awesome. Give me another question while she's looking, and then when you're ready, um, we'll stop. Okay. So, is there a question from Reddit or? Yeah. From, um. The yeah. the top voted question on Reddit is basically they want to present the trolley problem to Liren, and see how he rationalizes it. Yeah. So, <laughs> how uh, would what would Liren do? <laughs> yes. With the, the trolley, trolley problem. problem. Uh, I think it's fantastic. Mm. Yeah. Uh. So that is an excellent question. What would Liren do? Um. I think Liren's kind of pacifist nature would not let him hmm. pull the lever. So he would have the greater number of people die because he was not behind it, uh, which I think is kind of the only way that he could answer it and stay true to, uh, you know, the things that he rationalizes and believes in. Uh, so, um, so, yeah, that is an excellent question. That's, that's what I think. I'm going to assume that people, if people answered in the comments, they came up with the same solution. Do you got something for me, Em? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, this is from Kathleen Woodruff mm -hmm. in Canada. And Kathleen says that, mm -hmm. thank you for all your wonderful books. I have even started drawing thanks to your character, Shalon. Ah. And... She has a, a drawing of a red-breasted nuthatch. That's actually ah, really pretty. That's really cool. And it says hello. We get to hear that quite a bit. In fact, <laughs> I left my bird downstairs. Yes, and your bird uh, got out of his cage. How did he get out? He he bit one of the the locks off one of the side things. And got out. Kathy called me and said, um, is Jello supposed to be free in the lair? And I had to go down and get him and put him in his night cage. Wow. <laughs> how did he get the, that's a brand new cage we got it yeah, down there. So we'll new. have to look. He figured out how to open one of the side ones? He just bit some, I, don't, I didn't even see what it is. He bit something off so that one of the side things opened up. And he was out on top of the cage. <laughs> That Just, stinker. Uh, yeah, he was a stinker. He is so good at getting out of his cage. Man, we occasionally find him walking around or doing things because he has managed to, he can undo screws. He can undo locks. Yeah. He, and in this case, I don't know. I can't even, I don't even know what the original mechanism was to keep it closed, but he just yes. bit it into pieces. Yep. So. We'll have to do something else. All right. Well, we'll figure that out. That new cage. Uh, it is a very nice cage, but... Uh, <laughs> So, it's, yeah. Sometimes shoelaces. Sometimes we have to tie shoelaces because it's better. hard for him to. He can break metal really easily. Uh, this is my macaw. If you guys are curious why I'm yes. talking about Jello, Jello the bird. Yes, his name is Magellan, but we call him Jello. Yep. So. Oh, I keep forgetting that I don't need to open these. Mem's already opened them for me. Mm. We're going to keep a halo fountain. Oh, I have to take this charm. Okay, I've stolen a charm from you guys, but it's okay. There's lots of cool stuff still. <laughs> Using Brandon's product. There's a, there's a full art foil cut of the profits. I don't know if that's any good, but we've got one. What do we got, Em? 
Um, this is a question from Charlotte White. Mm-hmm. And Charlotte says, is it tiring to have people treat you differently because you are famous instead of a regular person? Um, you know, I don't get a ton of that. Well, you still are a regular person. I still am a regular person. I don't get a ton of it. Um, um, I get a little of it. Um, um, but mostly, you know, people who read my books are excited to meet me and things, but they love the books, right? Mm-hmm. And so their focus is on the books, which I've always thought is a good way to be famous. Yeah, I think right? it is. And so uh, I have not found it tiring yet. Um, like readers are kind of more like colleagues than they are like fans in some ways. They're like mm-hmm. between a fan and a colleague because they participate in the art, right? Like they imagine it and uh, things like that. And as I've always said, I, I like that part of being a ri- writer also. So so Camden, who mm-hmm. is 10 years old and has very nice cursive handwriting. Wow, cursive. Our 10-year-old is uh, also trying to perfect his cursive handwriting. Yes, and your 46-year-old has terrible cursive. So. <laughs> yes, you do have terrible cursive. Mm-hmm. But anyway, Camden says, why wouldn't Alcatraz write the real last book? Why wouldn't Alcatraz write the real last book? Alcatraz has troubles believing in himself, despite like a lot of his arrogance and sarcasm is a cover for how insecure he feels and how much he's failed, feels he's failed. And he felt like he deserved the bad ending, and that's why he wouldn't write the good ending. Good answer. Adam, do we have any uh, any other questions from the subreddit, or are uh, you busy doing other stuff over no, there? I just want to... Oh, mm-hmm. I need to turn myself back up. I apologize. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a super chat from uh, Nathaniel Yakov who, uh-huh. set, who donated $160. Whoa. Wow. Wow. Um, Thanks, he said, Nathaniel. Lost a friend today. He forgot the words. Thanks for helping me feel a bit better. Oh. Uh, it is my honor and pleasure, and I am sorry for your loss, man. Um, I, yeah. Oh, man. That is always, that is always rough to hear. Yeah. Mm. Thank you for the donation. Mm. We will get that donation to hopefully some people who need food in this yes. uh, in this time. Um, but we have a question from the. Oh, I turned myself down again. I apologize. Mm. We have a question from the sub uh, from the Reddit. Uh huh. Um, how are you prepping Dan Wells to start working in the Cosmere? So we are working closely on the Dark One, the novelization. It's not really a novelization of the graphic novel. It's my original outline. And this is the main way is like let we're working on a novel together that is not Cosmere to get our feet underneath us um, the, and things like that. He is also reading the whole series and kind of being brought into uh, dealing with how how crazy a bit of this is uh, in the business. Uh, those are so he'll have like probably a year before he starts writing novels in the Cosmere would be my guess. Uh, we'll do some short stories. We've got some cool ideas for some short stories that we'll have him write. Um, and, you know, one of the key things is, as I said, for the most part, we want him writing books that have world building like the Cosmere, um, but that play to Dan's strengths that are books that I would not be as good at writing. So the Cosmere just has a little bit more breadth to the types of stories we're telling. So hopefully it won't be too uh, too jarring to have Dan writing some Cosmere stories. I'm excited to see mm-hmm. what he comes up with. Yeah. We'll present it all to you once we know what we're doing, which we don't even know yet. Uh, we haven't come up with. Uh, so basically, we'll sit down and do some brainstorming and look at some of the things we need to have happen for the, the final uh, end game of the Cosmere and, th- and uh, then design some stories to fill out some of the things we want to have happened. Mm-hmm. I'm, tr- I'm being very uh, vague on purpose. I have a question for you when you're ready. Yeah, go for it. Um, This is from Sage Holbrook in Honolulu, Hawaii. Okay. And Sage says that Stormlight Archive Uh is their favorite. Ah. And if they were to choose a favorite character, I would be either Hoyt or Shalong. I think my reasons are pretty complex to me. Okay, I lied. The reason Uh is because they are the funniest characters in the series and get funnier when they are together. Awesome. If only there were a job to get paid to be annoying and insult people in real life. If there was, I would make a lot of money. (laughs) Too bad people are so boring to have magic powers. Mm. 
And uh, Sage has sent you a shard blade, it looks like. Oh, awesome. That looks like it's handmade. It is. That's really cool. So if anyone, uh, you know, if we ever come up with a real job that involves insulting people. Uh, it's my job. <laughs> it just doesn't insult, uh, insult real people mm. as much. I guess there are jobs that insult real people. Um, yeah, but I think it's more fun to insult made up people. Made up people. Mm -hmm. So, um, Virgil Sampson says, "Have you ever thought of having a Cosmer setting be an, a D and D system?" Uh, yes, yes, I have. Um, but more likely, what we're going to do is create our own. We might make it be compatible with Fifth Edition. Uh, so we are working on a Stormlight uh, pen and paper RPG right now, and I am not sure what we will end up doing um, with that, uh, like all the details, but there is a decent chance we'll make it. Uh, we'll want to listen to the fans, but it seems like having something that is compatible with D&D is a good idea. Mm. And do we have another one from the subreddit? I can get you one. One yeah. second. And if you're... Oop, oop, look, look, we just got a foil triome. <laughs> this is what we've been wanting, a foil alternate alt art triome. There's, there's, the, there's the big prize of the evening. That's what I've been wanting. And you got one. I got one. You have to tell me the ones that are cool because they don't, I don't even know which ones are cool and which ones aren't. Yep. I've played magic. I always tell people, I think three times in my mm -hmm. entire life, and each time, basically, you played your I hand. I played, yeah. And my hand. Yep. So. Kind of had to play some solitaire explaining. Yes. I've gotten better at teaching people, but uh, it's still, yeah. This is an interesting question. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Pat and Kane. Padden Kane? Yes. <laughs> Says, could you maybe trap an unmade in one of those paintings from one of your secret projects? Um, oh, that is a Raffo. I'm going to mm. give you a Raffo as well. Uh, it's an excellent question. Um, but uh, let's see. What are we going to Where are we gonna put our Raffo on? We'll put it on this treasure token. R-A-F-O. All right, there's another one. So okay. one goes to the, watch out for that being wet. Um, so one goes to the to the young lady. Um, yep, and, I've got that yep, one over here. And that one goes to that. So there we are. Adam, any other questions? Um, yes, and it is 8.59. So 8.59, okay, okay. Uh, this next question is from Rober678 from the Reddit thread. Did the decision of adding a whole new era of books, uh, speaking of Wax and Wayne, uh -huh. to the Mistborn saga change the plans for the plotting of the two remaining eras? Uh, it did a little bit. So basically things that I thought I was going to have to squeeze in to the, uh, to the 1980s era, I was able to get some foreshadowing in in Wax and Wayne instead. So it kind of made my job easier. It hasn't changed the actual outline that much um, or the story. Um, but it has let me put in a bunch of foreshadowing, um, ahead of time. So, um, so yeah, I think I'm going to open this last pack and sign it. And while oh, you're look, oh. I got another one. So we've got two of the, two of the five triomes we got hey, in. Give one to Joel. Well, no, they are the, uh, they're, they're five of them oh. and I need all five. Oh, you have to get all five. Yes. It's they're it, lands. It's a set. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. So. Uh, but I will give some of this stuff to Joel. Um, ooh, we got another cat token. Um, all right, so this is this is this is us near the end here. I'm going to sign these ones, and we're going to see what this thing was, and we will do some more of this fan mail. Let's make sure we catch up on this fan mail before the end of the year. Okay. Uh, so that they don't wait longer than a year uh, to to get this. I'm glad that I had to open this one. I've been eyeing it mm. ever since I sat down. <laughs> All right, what do we got? We have Emelina ASMR with some popping yes, yes. of that stuff, whatever it's called. Oh, 
bubble wrap, bubble bubble wrap popping. It's, it's been a long day for, for Jello. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jello does like bubble wrap. All right. House Siberial proudly presents you with your official Chicken Scouts hatchet. Chicken Scouts hatchet. Yes. Now that is awesome. This, this is from Forged Foam. Oh, awesome. They um, make our, uh, our, our shard blades that you yes. can buy, foam shard blades. It says, I hope this letter finds you and yours well. Thank you all for keeping up with the live streams. I hope you enjoy your official Chicken Scouts hatchet. May it serve you well in the chasms. And the question is, did Taln actually give in to torture, or was it just the collapse of the pact in general? Rafo. I have a million questions, but that's the one I want to know the most. Rafo. It is one I will answer eventually. Mm. So Rafo. It, it, it'll come someday, Mike. It will come someday. All right. This I'm is amazing. I'm signing cat token here. Uh, so thank you all for your generosity. We'll let you guys know. Um, and once again, if you donated 20 bucks or more, uh, send us with your username to... Um, I'll put it in the chat right yes, now, but in charity the chat. Dragon Steel charity Dragon at gmail.com. And the rest of you were able to send to contest at... What is it? Is it Dragon Steel also? Contest at Brandon Contest at BrandonSanderson.com. And whatever we have that we didn't give away, we will pick some of you randomly and just send you cards, uh, signed cards. Uh, thanks again to Tim. I still have a few of these packs. We'll find, figure out something to do with those. Um, and uh, I have two of my triumphs in special foily. And what else do I have in the other ones? So I ended up with... You need a, a raffle for uh, Mike from Forged Foam. I do need a raffle for Mike so. from Forged Foam. I'll have to write one if, of these. If he's not I a actually, magic player, then maybe we'll give him an actual raffle card. But Yes, yes. But if he is a magic player, then... Well, I got two copies of this one, so I can send him that this one. But anyway, uh, thank you, guys. We'll give you a little dancing tortoise at the end. Well, and um, mm -hmm. do you want me to share how much we raised? Oh, did you get it? Yeah. yeah. Um, Twenty-seven hundred dollars. Twenty-seven hundred bucks. Yeah. That's wow. incredible for Thank for an experiment on yeah. how to do this. Like we Thank might do you. this officially in the future. Uh, this was just set. Can we figure out how to make this work? Yeah. Uh, you guys are awesome. Yes. Uh, we will get that to Tabitha's way, um, and we'll send you your cards and uh, have a happy Halloween. And uh, we'll come up with some more costumes for next year. <laughs> uh, Thank you again to Kelly uh, for the uh, wonderful face paint. Um, yes. Excellent job last minute getting us amazing face paint. Uh, and we'll get the rest of you've sent us fan mail. We didn't get to it. We'll get to it before the end of the year. Um, we will maybe do it when we're doing our spoiler stream. Uh, we'll pop, pop, pop open some of these. So anyway, take care, everybody. Have a wonderful evening.